chosen to test this station's destructive power on your home planet of Orbit. What? Then name the system Orbit. Loki religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blast. Start coming up on Alderaan. You may fire when ready. Welcome to the Explosion Network's Countdown to the Last Jedi podcast, Countdown podcast, all around an explosion. Was that correct, Ash? That was very, very accurate. That Thank was, you. That or, was shocking. Also, Do you host? Also known as the show we should have called Paul Cast and we fucked up. Joining me again is Ash. Has and someone Kieran, taken that? As always. I swear I Paul suggested Cast? Paul Cast. We did, but it's just, it didn't happen. You just, it wasn't as good as any that, of my names either. It was, the your names were too nerdy. The your names were good. just... I'm sorry. And joining us this week, our first guest on Old Rain Explosion, special guest Buddy Watson. May the force be with you. Thank you. Oh sir. God, he's crying. Star Wars. Look at look. He's look at him just coming in with the fucking the straight. Nerd. May the first May the force be with you, everyone. I'm and that's it. That's to, that's my contribution. You. Thank you. Uh, thanks for being great. Thanks for having me. Uh, that's all I know about Star Wars. Uh, see you next time. Play him off stage, right? <laughs> it was great. Great having you on uh, Review Culture. Check it out. Bye, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, there is I, a Porg cast. Uh, yeah. The first tweet is the 17th of October, so I assume they started after us. Mother after fuckers. us. I suggest, I think it was even me that suggested Porg cast. Yeah. And then someone was like, no, it's two on the nose. And I was like, you got outvoted on all the names. Yeah, anyway. but your names were like, how can Way I, too how, nerdy. How can I stop myself from getting a girlfriend quick? <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> it's a fucking Star Wars podcast, and I'm getting told off for trying to come up with the names of the show that sound too nerdy. That name's too nerdy, Dylan. Fuck all he is. Everyone on Explosion Network and get fucked. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's. If you haven't listened to the show before, this is a weird point to jump in. Uh, you should probably listen. This is actually a podcast. You should just probably listen to old episodes from one to however many we do. Eight, right? Yes, eight, nine, and uh, maybe there's because episode. It's the lead up to episode eight, so there will in fact be eight episodes. Good job on the maths. No there, promises. Uh, this week we have watched Rogue One and a new A New Hope back to back. A big old, like, four-hour sit-on-your-ass stretch of Star Wars there. Mm. That was fun for everyone involved. And I assume, we'll get to this question shortly, but I'm going to assume everyone had a great time doing that. Uh, so we're going to talk about those two movies, and then we're going to talk about the, at the end of the show, after we get through both those movies in about six hours' time, we will talk about the breaking Star Wars news from last week, which was that they announced a new trilogy of films. We'll touch on that, and we'll touch on the announcement of the TV show, and maybe briefly Battlefront, depending on if it's at seven and a half to eight hours. I don't know. It depends how long we're going for. We'll just see how it goes. Get your so, coffee. <laughs> get your coffee ready, everyone. Uh, let's kick it off. General, to answer that question for me, did everyone just in general enjoy the back-to-back marathon? Because I think I was the only person that had done it before. I don't think... I think Buddy... I saw on tw- Twitter, Buddy had, hadn't watched Rogue One since it came out on Blu-ray. And I know Kieran and Ash, I think he's both said you'd never done the back-to-back thing, but no. I'd already done it. And it's a great experience. Starting with you, Ash. How was it? I enjoyed Rogue One. I think it's... It's hard to watch Star War- the original Star Wars right after Rogue One. Just like... The, it hasn't aged great. In comparison, what are you saying? <laughs> it's just very slow. I mean, and Rogue One was very fast paced, I thought. So, yeah, it was a very sharp contrast, I thought. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. And just graphic. Kieran? I mean, Rogue One is a beautiful movie. It yeah, was- we'll, get to, we'll get to the movie separately. K- Kieran, overall, the marathon, how'd it feel? Jarring? Good, but jarring. Like it's yeah, so basically the same as Ash. Basically the same as Ash. Yeah, oh, okay, oh, you were looking at me like I was talking crazy. No, I was <laughs> no. just like, oh, you had the balls to do it? Okay. okay. <laughs> I what if I friend. didn't say it? <laughs> <laughs> you would be like, oh, it was a great experience. <laughs> oh, I had perfect. a wonderful time. <laughs> <laughs> what are you scared of me for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, you, had a, you, you, you enjoyed it as much as I did, didn't you? <gasps> didn't you? Didn't you? <laughs> okay, Dylan. Pulls knife from back. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about you then, buddy? So I haven't had, I haven't seen Rogue One since the actual cinema viewing, not even the Blu-ray viewing. 
Um, it was kind of also jarring, but not in the sense that it was jarring for Ash and Kieran. It was jarring in the sense that maybe I didn't love Rogue One as much as what I thought I did, but then seeing A New Hope again got me really pumped up for the newer movies, you know, the new movie coming out. That's when I, you know, towards the end of Rogue One and, and A New Hope, I was like, all right, awesome. This, this is what I'm hyped about now, so... Oh, interesting. All right, so let's 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 kick it in. We'll start with Rogue One then. Um, you, I've watched Rogue One a, a, like four or five times since it came out on Blu-ray. I think I think it's like my third favorite Star Wars movie. It's in my top three. Um, I absolutely love it. Uh, so I feel like that's the complete opposite of Buddy. So I should probably just we should probably just start with Buddy and. Uh, what are your, like, re-watching it, what were your biggest problems and stuff? It's weird, because after seeing Rogue One, I was so so pumped to see it at the movies, loved it when I saw it. Um, I think it, even when I did, like, a, a rankings, you know, of all the Star Wars movies after seeing Rogue One, it was really, it was quite high. But um, maybe I was just on Star Wars fever on, on, the, on the train of, you know, seeing Force Awakens that I was just probably craving more. It's it's probably still quite high. It's definitely you know of course let's not be silly. It's higher than all the um, the OG prequels. ones. But um, yeah. Oh yeah, sorry. The pre- prequels, not no, OG ones. Prequels. Um, <laughs> OG prequels. <laughs> OG prequels. It's technically a prequel. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but watching again, it's I don't know. It's it. You're gonna hate me for this. It kind of seems irrelevant, like story story wise. It's kind of retconned in so I make maybe I, I made me care less about it seeing it like I don't know it's a good movie but I, I, yeah <laughs> it, breaking my heart I <laughs> know I'm sorry I don't I don't hate it I, I like it it's it's good for what it was you know it's it's Star Wars just yep. more Star Wars in my life but it doesn't it's not the Star Wars that you know like I'm craving whereas I thought That's it fair. was at the time um Kieran I enjoyed it. I still enjoy it. Um, I guess for me, watching it this time with a more... Once again, I'm saying this every week now that I'm watching them more analytically. Just take that for granted whenever I talk for the rest of the podcast series. But um, I guess it's very easy to see start like the writers of Rogue One fitting this story into like the jigsaw piece that was the Star Wars series. Like, you it like... You could very much see... It's not like you're writing a normal story where you're kind of... You start where you want and you finish where you want. There's a very kind of set start and end points to the movie with certain things that have to happen or have to be explained again. Um, Which is, yeah, kind of obvious. Because a lot of the... I think a lot of the things going into it, especially when we originally... um, When you originally went to see Rogue One, I think the big question was, all right, how are they going to explain where all these characters went? Um, they're introducing so many new characters. How do they explain where they all went? And it's like that's because most of them die, and that's just they all die. They yep, they all die. <laughs> um, spoilers, by the way. Spoilers. <laughs> if you're listening to this, what? Okay, whatever. But um, <laughs> yeah, is that the fact? It's just the simple fact of they all dead, and you're like, oh, okay. I think that's. I think that's the answer. The, the answer for me that they're all dead is both a good answer and a bit of a bittersweet answer that I'm kind of like, I wish there was that little bit of, you know, this person, like, even there's a bit of mystery over, like, one or two, like, one person surviving or not might have been cool, but, um, yeah, that was my thoughts for the program. Fair enough. Um, Ash? Yeah, I really enjoyed it, obviously. It's like, it's like one of the most pretty ones. I mean, some of those It shots. is the most pretty. Yeah. I think it's prettier than Force Awakens. I think it's shot way better than Force Awakens. Yeah. I mean that beach battle. I mean, it, it's mm. yeah, it's it's the most. I was thinking it's probably the most green of the Star Wars movies, and then I remember the Battle of Endor. But yeah, I was uh, going to say Endor. <laughs> it's the most colorful. Yeah, yeah. most colorful. Yeah, and it it wrapped up the biggest plot hole in the entire Star Wars series. So why did they have that small hole in the in the Death Star? So, yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's genius, <laughs> and they explain it. As far as I'm concerned, they explain it what, like it's a it's a well There's motivation good behind reason. it. Yeah, it's like it just, makes sense. Yeah, it's not like that's a weird thing that happens. It's like oh, that makes sense. Yeah. All right, so uh, I'm just going to begin running down through all my notes and stuff. And if we get to a point in the movie where you've got something to say on the scene, I've wrote down notes for. Jump in as always. Um, the first thing I wrote down is 
Uh, I remember watching uh, the prologue, the opening prologue before you get to the the Rogue One thing, and the fir- even watching that in the cinema day one. I got so emotional watching it. And this is, I think this is something I talked about. Like I did a, a video on it when it came out. And I remember I, the reason I got so emotional and I still do watching the opening prologue thing is because, and this ties into last week with the whole extended universe material and stuff like that, is because I read that prequel book going into the movie. And I, as soon as I saw Krennic and Galen facing off against each other, I'd already read a book about like the 20 years history of their life and those two staring at each other, I was just like boiling. Like, cause I already hated Krennic. I'm like, you're a, f- I fucking hate you. Cause I already know what he did to that family. And then I remember reading about people hating that prologue scene and how weird it was. And it, this is disregarding the, the, the only thing I hate about it is it does cut to the rogue one title. It does do that weird bit of music. And I still don't understand. It's just, that's, one of the worst parts of the movie is like, and she gets to the hole and then dee, 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 like one cut to 20 years later. It's like, that was the weirdest transition I've ever seen in my life. But I remember people not liking the prologue scene because they're like little girl, we see him, she dies. Like no one had the, the feelings I had to it. Um, so does anyone else hate or love the opening prologue? Or, Cause it's also basically what the prologue is, is something in a star Wars movie. They would usually have text for and they could have opened Rogue One with an opening crawl like Jyn Erso has escaped, blah, 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 Krennic after Galen Erso, they were on the planet, blah, 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 blah. But instead of having an opening crawl, they actually just show you what would be considered opening crawl material. Yeah. Um, does anyone hate or love this? Because it's probably what they're going to do with Han Solo as well. I think it's one of those things where you just kind of have to like reserve yourself to the fact that this is something that you might not fully understand at the time. Just kind of sit in, strap in for the ride, and learn what's going on. I, it's one of those things, and I, you've met, it makes me realize this more and more being on this podcast with you, Dylan. Is that I wish I had that prior knowledge that you have on it. Like I wish you had that kind of um, that background knowledge, like knowing that information between. Because there's quite clear history between Krennic and um, Galen, Galen um, that is quite um important to the movie so once again it's it's that so going back to that discussion we had last week about you know what stuff needs to be filled in and what doesn't yeah did you have something to say buddy you yeah from you loved it or no i really enjoyed it because it's a good it's after seeing all the other star wars movies and being used to the opening crawl to not have that and then to have that that kind of prologue bit i know it cuts away to the title but it was cool to see something different and kind of really set itself apart from the the main kind the of main the main storylines yeah. that they're doing and really set it as a, you know, standalone type movie. That's extra. Yeah, standalone movie. So yeah, I kind of enjoyed but that aspect. The only thing I'd fix is the transition. And to me, it's just like you put way more tamer music in the background than like this big, like orchestral, da-da! you just put like, <laughs> like a little like twinkly, like, to, and just fade mm. in, fade out to a title kind of thing. The mother and just got just, like, slayed for Christ's better. sake. <laughs> yeah. It's something, I don't know. It's just a really weird, that's probably that's one of my least favorite parts of the movie, though. Um, next thing I wrote down note about was uh, when we first meet Cass- Cassian. Um, there, I just I, every time I watch this scene, I'm like, it is so amazing that they have after spending so many movies with uh, the rebels always being like, well, they're good guys and we do everything great and everyone's really nice and nice. They're like, here's this rebe- rebellion spy and he just shoots someone in the back and like he's completely. It's the com- like complete he's source, opposite of not like a bad guy, like the person he's yeah, getting it's info like from. They they add proper gray territory to the the characters instead of because when star wars was first created it was like rebels good empire bad and there was like no in between whereas now you've got these characters in rogue one which are like Jin and cassian who are all these other characters are way more flimsy like are they good are they bad well they're good but they're they shades float of more towards shades, of, shades of, gray. of gray yeah especially when you just shoot an innocent person in the back and just like, fuck you, dude. See you later. I'm just going to climb out of here with your limpy leg, <laughs> stuff like that. And um, Cassian's probably one of my, Cassian's one of the best characters in this movie, I think. Yep. He's so great. And um, I just like in that scene, there's just like the, he's, he's such a great actor too. What's uh, mental blanking up the, the, the guy's name? Di- but, Diego Luna. Um, yes. Diego Luna. God thank damn you. Diego Luna. He's, he's, he's a handsome re- really, really good. And I love that scene. Um, 
the talking about the music too. The I remember when it came out, everyone complained about the score because they were saying it's like one of the it's like subpar for Star Wars territory on music. And I wasn't like the biggest fan of it the first time watching it, but it's grown on me since then. And one piece of music that I love is the first time we go to Jeddah. The music, the, the like the I don't know if it's like drums, like bongo drums or something like that, and like a horn that plays. Like it's this Jeddah music that's it's like Saw's music here with the the his parties his group or whatever it's like doom, like all that sort of stuff that's great and i don't know why everyone was hating on the score i remember people saying it's like one of the worst scores of the year and i'm like you're crazy one of the worst scores of the year of the know, year like that's that's a bit the year. Uh, that's crazy it's like that's yeah. that's pretty um yeah, it's pretty yeah that's that's, that's rough just hyperbolic or something like that that's everyone's just getting annoyed because they're used to a certain standard of star wars music and every yeah every every rewatch i'm like it's not terrible. It's fine. Like it's you know, whatever everyone's problem is. Um, I love a note talking about how much I love the cast when we get to Bodhi Rook. But there's another character who's great. Like another character we haven't had in the movies as well. It's like a an Empire soldier who's switched to the wants to switch to the good side and stuff like that. I'm just like rewatching it. I was just reminded how great all the characters are in this and the character types that we haven't got in Star Wars movies before. I guess it's even the fact that, you know, some of these characters have less time than others to establish themselves and grow, and and they still do a fantastic job of doing it. Like, Bodhi doesn't have the most time. Bodhi probably has maybe the, out of the core group, has maybe some of the The hardest, like the least time to grow because of the whole, you know, Sol Gerrera wiping his like messing with his brain with that monster thing. Um, Why did he do that? Yeah, that that was quite confusing. I skip ahead a note. And I do have the Borgolet is one of the worst parts of this movie. The Borgolet, <laughs> whatever the fuck. Borgolet. It is. It is actually one of the. I I don't understand why it's in there. Just to have Forrest Whitaker. They like. They just want to play up how crazy Saul Guerrero it is. So there's Borgolet. Borgolet, take him to the Borgolet. What the fuck are you on about? It's just like that's one they of the, some the extra scenes CG I'm money. Uh, just just take out that that five minute scene. Okay, just just take it out. It's not necessary. At all. Like, we, we want to show you there's more big monsters in Star Wars other than the ones you've already seen. I don't care. Like, no. unless this is coming back in some meaningful way, which it probably isn't. I'm just like, why are you fucking showing me this mm. at all? Um, what, I want to get everyone's opinions on the, uh, like, the, when it comes up with the, the titles of the planets and stuff like that. I love that. That's one of my favorite was parts of this movie. So useful. It, if it was useful, yeah. except for they didn't do it for... They don't do it for Mustafa. They don't do it for Mustafa. And, I, and I, part of me just wanted it to just reassure me because I had the moment of, that's Mustafa, right? And But it never came up. And I'm like, I'm, I'm just going to... Yeah, it is. But I wish yeah. it would reassure me. That's that's one of those annoying choices they made where they for that scene because they didn't want to give away where it is because I suppose if it come up Mustafa, people would have been like, oh, shit, Vader. Oh, shit, Vader. Because he wasn't in the, the trailer or anything. No. Yeah, they wanted to they wanted to keep that a secret up until the Vader reveal, I suppose. But when you when you watch the movie your second time or third time, whatever, after your first time, and you know that's where it is, it does feel weird when every single other planet has had the title of it come up, except for you get the Mustafa and it's just not there at all. It's like, yeah, but okay, maybe this works the first time you're watching the movie, but after that just kind of feels weird to me. Um, this is, apart from this is in line with the prequels, the, one of the only other movies where you get to jump around to a whole heap of different planets and stuff. Because, like, the original trilogy, they go to, like, one, two planets. And it's, they're just like, here's your two planets of the movie and stuff like that. Uh, prequels, especially, like, episode three, there's, like, a scene there, especially when you're seeing all the Jedi die. It's like, here's, like, a planet, here's a planet, here's a planet, here's a planet. And it's, like, a to- one of the only times in the Star Wars universe where you're like, look at all these really cool places, I wish I could go there. And you can if you watch the Stone Wars, the Clone Wars animated series, you can explore all those planets. But in the movies, we don't get to, to see many planets. Um, Rogue One is probably the movie where you go to the most planets. Part, mm. if you, unless you, like, want to dis... Unless you want to count episode three with a couple seconds, but um, I, just, I think it's very great how they're all varied and the like the one we first meet Cassian, how it's like this weird like two meteors forming together like city type thing. It's really great when you watch a sci-fi show and you're like, I want to spend more time there, and you don't get to. I want to spend more time there, but you don't get to, and stuff mm. like that. Um, 
just just on that, I, re- I for you know episode three, I really enjoyed when they did that cutaway to all the different planets because I felt like later on in the movie it made sense what was happening. You know, Order six, sixty six or whatever was happening at the time. Mm-hmm. But in Rogue One, it kind of frustrated me because it was at the start and it felt like it was very choppy. Like when, in this planet, all of a sudden we're in this planet. It was like a real quick quick changes. That was one of my things that kind of annoyed me initially like i kind of have got over it now in the second viewing but i remember that being one of the things you know from when i saw it at the cinema I was like oh we're jumping around too much too early they kind of haven't got it haven't eased into their kind of the cadence of the movie yet so yeah i think yeah. I for, I, my thing i like it with it sorry just shut up dylan for a second let me talk you've talked enough already mate <laughs> Because right. um, I have a question. I guess it's. I guess it's. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm just. Uh, I guess the the planet that Souls on, um, which I can't remember the name. Did you of say Soul? Soul. 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 Yeah, Soul Goodman. Soul. Soul. Soul Goodman. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> that person. He's selling. He's selling car insurance. Forrest, Forrest Whitaker. His Soul planet. Guerrera is on Jeddah. Is on Jeddah. So. Mm. Jeddah, did, do you think they did enough? Um, do you think they did enough for Jeddah to make it feel like a separate planet? Say it's because it's a lot like Tatooine in a couple of ways, like you know, sand, desert land. You know, do they? Do they? Do you think they did a good enough job with making it have its own identity for the environment? Um, I do because they got giant fuck off statues of. Jedi's laying in the sand and stuff. And that's, I remember the first time I saw one of those, the screen, the image of that in one of the trailers, I lost my goddamn mind seeing that giant Jedi statue and even seeing it in the movie. I'm like, Oh my God, I love it so much. And then just having Jedi city be there, be a place where they've got the temples with all the, the, the Kyber crystals and stuff like that. Like all that just separates it to me in my mind, like all those details just, it's not even the same as Tatooine. It's not even the same as Jakku, like all these planets that you could say are very similar because they, of what's on the planet, like none of, neither of those other two planets have, it's like, if, if you want to talk about Tatooine, I think of like slaves and huts because that's where the huts are and stuff like that. And Jakku is probably worse than both these other planets because it's got literally nothing and it's just like where people stop between places to trade and it's just like a whole bunch of fucking nothing where the Empire um, and the Rebels had pretty much their last big battle before it was all over. And that's probably what that planet's known for. So they, in my mind, they're all very separate, even though they look okay. the same. Anyone else have? Yeah, I'd, no? I'd, I'd probably yeah, agree with that. Felt, Deep, they felt different. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Ash. Jetta felt, Jetta felt more like India, maybe. Like, it's a lot of people condensed in a really small area. Whereas, like, Tatooine and Jakku was, like, maybe, like, in Egypt or something like that, where they, it seems they're more spread out. It's not as densely populated. Yeah, it felt like yeah, yeah, buddy. Oh, just saying. Yeah, the the detail makes sense. Just I guess it's when it comes down to it's the aesthetic, like the sand, the sand. But when you you know you explain it like that, the details of you know about both both of them, yeah, it completely makes sense that they're yeah. differentiated. I suppose it's like if you if you think about older cities, like put in your mind like Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, you know, like think of all the major cities in Australia. Mm. They're all look the same. Yeah, pretty the much. Lon- no, with Launceston does look the same. Hobart, <laughs> sure. And then they um, um compare like you, if you just look from an outset, they all just look like cities. They're greys, they're buildings, blah, 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 blah. But then your mind automatically starts being like beaches for this place or like which are constantly changing weather for Melbourne or like you know what I mean like you, your brain starts what do you think I just said I said no, beaches no not my, I was confused <laughs> at like the little stroke you had where you were like <laughs> I'm such a fucking transformer <laughs> Friday the 13th here yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so it's, I, I think it's the same to me. It's like, if you just look at cities from an outset, but your mind automatically set, separates them all from key features to, to different cities, even though from, from, a, from a viewing point, they pr- pretty much are the same type of thing. If you, if you boil it down to just buildings and, and cement, mm. which mm. they are. You've just made me thought, did you ever realize that the forest moon of Endor is, is, is a forest? Mm-hmm. It's amazing. 
Yeah. It's, it's also a moon. Yeah. You just, you just described literally everything about it in your sentence. <laughs> Good job, Kieran. <laughs> when you think right. about it, most planets would probably be covered in sand. Like if they've got no yeah. life on them. So. Yeah. We've got a whole bunch of sand here too. Somewhere. Yeah. How to Beaches. defend yourself from Darth Vader. Cover your planet in sand. Yeah. The ultimate defense. Didn't go to, he didn't go to Jeddah, did he? Didn't nope. go to Jeddah. He didn't go up. to Tattle. He, he didn't, go he didn't land on Scarif. And... Yeah. Think about all the planets like Palpatine's like, Lord Vader, <laughs> can you fucking take out the... Ra-? Nah, mate. Nah, uh <laughs> Not sand, that one. Uh, nah. Sand. Nah, uh, sand's coarse. Sand <laughs> is coarse. No way, feelings. Gets a hole in my suit. Send me, uh, send me locks my knees smooth. up well good. That one does. <laughs> <laughs> Cloud City, okay, no problems. I'm on. there. <laughs> <laughs> um, my t- my two favorite characters in this whole movie are the two ga- uh, guardians of the w- wills, which are of course Ch- Chariot Inu and Baz Malbus, who I really love S- simply because. Simply because they're two, they offer two characters into stuff in the Star Wars universe that I'm really interested in, which is the idea of people uh, believing in and following the Force without actually being like Jedi or Force users. We get like a, they've, they're moving into this territory weirdly because they did it at the start of uh, the Force Awakens as well with a uh, mental blank on the character's name, but the old dude at the start there who he's like the head of or part of a church that believe in the Force but they, they follow it and its teachings, but they're not none of them are Force-sensitive. That's what all those people that are slaughtered at the start of The Force Awakens, they're all part of this following of the church Force thing. And these two are also similarly just following these teachings and protecting the, the Book of the Wills in some way. And we don't know much about them, their history, their job, what they actually do throughout history, if there's more of them. There's so many questions and having characters that, offer me heaps of questions just excites me because I'm like, I want to know more. I want to know more. This is really cool. And Chiriot, Chiriot, I can never say his name, right? I'll probably never say it. it's like Chiriot, Chiriot, whatever. Um, funniest character in the movie. I had, I had to write down the, the one, the one line that makes me laugh every time I watch this movie, which is after they have the big fight scene and they're with Jin and all this other sort of stuff. And then uh, Saul Guerrero's men come in and they're, they're going to take him all away and he puts the bag over the head and he even just the way he delivers the line where he's just like are you kidding me? I'm blind! <laughs> <laughs> it makes me laugh every single time it's so good um, Donnie Yen's also like one of my favourite he's um, great m- martial artist actor p- people that first actor, fight scene where he takes out the stormtroopers is dope yeah is that it like the dope. first sh- like martial arts we've seen in Star Wars? Or? Yeah, like proper yeah. martial arts stuff yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, which is great. I was like, I remember when they cast him? I was like, oh god, like the, are they trying to make him like a, a Jedi or someone using a lightsaber? Because I automatically just pictured him doing that stuff. And then when they announced he was a blind monk, and I saw the picture of him with the stick, I was like, I can see this happening. I can see how this is going down. <laughs> I actually find his companion way more interesting than him. Baz Malbus? Mm, really? Yeah. Mm. yeah, I just do. I think there's something like, you know, this his companion that he's looking after um, is, of course, the special snowflake of the movie, kind of. He's the... Um, he's got, yeah, this whole, you know, can see, had leads led by the Force. Then you've got... His, and then you've got Baz. Baz? Boz? Yeah. Baz Boz? Well, I say Baz... I'm sure someone Bass? says Bays, Bass? but guess what? We already covered Bass? Star Wars pronunciations. <laughs> However, the fuck you want. <laughs> um, I guess for me, it's a like. So he's a. Is he a clone trooper or something to do with? Nope. Yeah. Nope. No, really. He always comes off like he is. I don't know why. Maybe it's just the nope. the actor. But um, to me, it's how did this guy get involved looking after? This, you know, four sensitive blind man. Because there's well, this... he, he used to be part of the church. Yeah, I understand he used to be part of the church, but just this, like, they've got this very. Um, m- my favorite line between the two is um, when he leaves the ship. When he leaves the ship, and he's yeah. like, I don't need luck because I have you. I have you. And yeah. it's just and like. He stands up. <laughs> and he stands up instantly and starts walking after him. It's. Um, it's. I think that's one of the most interesting, almost relationships, like because it's almost a throwback to, 
um, how the Jedi's are, and you don't get that um, that feeling anymore in like four, five, six, um, even mm-hmm. seven. You don't get that. You know, there's the whole the the in the prequels. There's like banter between um, either Qui Gon and Obi Wan and um, Anakin and Obi Wan, and then it's just like these two friends that have grown old together. And I've clearly been through a lot together. That there's this relationship there that's rich and fulfilling. Um, that I found really fascinating when I watched the movie. Yep. Are there Do more stories any... with them? Yep. Have somebody yep. done stories with them yet? There's a book on them. Yeah. yeah. Is there really? It's called. I will. I'll find it. I'll I can't remember. It. I can't remember the name of it. Son of a. <laughs> Why do we even what keep kind? you around? Why do Sorry. We, um, Can't remember the name of all the books. Fuck. If you're free uh, next week to be our Star Wars expert, please uh, <laughs> email send us an email. At send an email at to... explosionnetwork.com. No, nah, there's actually a. I'll set up a new email address. There's a better Star Wars nerd than Dylan at explosionnetwork.com. Okay, um, we'll get on that. Just send us your video clips. Your video interviews. Your video clips for yeah. this audio podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's I've got job. to be able to look at you. Dylan's actually pretty okay to look at, so uh, yeah. I like how that's part of the voting process. Yep. Um, anyone have anyone else have anything to say on these two while we're on them? Yeah, I like their inch, yeah, I like their uh, the relationship. I I'm kind of like Kieran. I'd like to know more about how that came together, and because it seems quite obscure that they are together. Not just you know we're a part of, you know we're a part of that church or whatever. So yeah, I like it. So, so like what it. is Chiriot exactly? Like, he's just force sensitive, because he could like, like tell that Cassian wanted to go kill Galen Erso later in the yeah, movie. Yeah, like he, he must be like the tiniest bit force sensitive. Tiniest. They bit. don't really. Maybe yeah. he lived near a tree. Well, he's not lift. Yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they they haven't really explained that even in the book. They don't like cover like. Oh, by the way, I'm a little bit. I'm he's like ten percent. He's got a lot of midi chlorians in him. Yeah, like I've got them ninety-eight midi chlorians or how? Could they do like a midi chlorian want... transplant? No, yeah, that's yeah. Darth that Vader road. does a blood, like a blood transplant. Yeah, that's what's in his chamber, his healing chamber. God, just midi chlorians <laughs> everywhere in bath water. <laughs> he could have used them as a blood bank for all the stormtroopers. Then all the stormtroopers oh have Jedi powers. Oh my god. god. I so hope they measure midi chlorians in the last Jedi. By the way, that's one of my hopes. Just so to know so many. People. I just want. I can't. I can't wait for the news stories if they do. Luke pulls they out this device it. and is a uh, yeah. looks over Ray. He scans wow. Ray. He puts it on Ray. Chlorian. Yeah, it's huge. Yep. Don't it doesn't even say midi chlorians and it'll still piss people off because they'll know what it is. They'll just have flashbacks. Episode one. There'll be people in the cinema like. Fuck. <laughs> and then they bring Gungans back. <laughs> Please do bring, Gung- bring Gungans back. Jar Jar has a Jar Jar didn't have a great end to his life. So, in the fanfic um, universe, I'd love it for the the not to have a medical encounter, but only the Gungans can sense them. So they have to bring the Gungans back to to sense it with their make that know. canon. Just make that canon. <laughs> exactly. That's a good idea. Hundred <laughs> percent. Just do it. I want to see it be a thing. Uh, <laughs> So one of my one of my favorite things every time rewatching these movies, and the best thing about rewatching Star Wars movies with the constant for, one of the best things about re- rewatching Star Wars movies for me personally, by keeping up with the books and comics and all that sort of stuff, is rewatching stuff where I've read a new book or comic or something that's tied into it. And since in Inferno Squad, which is the prequel Battlefront book, um, it's basically about Ida Versio's squad infiltrating the remainder of Saw Guerrero's group and trying to take them down. And so when we first enter Saw Guerrero's hideout, whatever you want to call it, and there's that shot of the camera just following through, just like panning around the room, showing all these different characters' faces and all this sort of stuff. Having recently read that book, I, the whole time watching, I'm like, fuck, are any of these the like the characters that I've met? And now I need someone to tell me. So I started tweeting at like the Star Wars story group people in the middle of watching the movie. Like, can anyone confirm or deny if any of the characters in Inferno Squad are in this room? And it's not important and it won't change anything about the movie apart from the fact that if I do rewatch it, they're like, I'll be able to go, oh, that's such and such. And they, in the book and its thing and its stuff. And 
once again, I'm just reminded why I like Star Wars so much at the moment with the whole connected EU because that's the shit that get, that's the shit I love. People are like, why does canon matter? It doesn't really, but having these cool connections, if you get into it like I do, it's just really like it's a really good feeling. Like when you're like, oh, they could be the oh the the things and the oh it's just so exciting and I love it so much and I feel like every week we have to talk about well, like what should be in, in extended EU and not sort of stuff and that kind of conversation comes up anyway but this is just one of those moments where it's like it wouldn't affect the movie at all if they told me but it would be really cool for the people that have read the book and stuff like that to have to be like that guy was that person in the book and you're like oh, i get to know what they actually look like now with i see kieran the whole time it's just like i was shaking my head because you continue <laughs> to amaze me but uh, <laughs> um just I guess, do you, when I remember watching back, I don't know, maybe you've read into it more, Dylan, previously, but when I originally watched the trailers for Rogue One and then went into Rogue One, I expected um, Saw Gerrera to be a bigger part of the movie than he actually was. Were you expecting yeah. him to? I thought he would have about the same level of part, but I didn't think that would like, kill him off. Okay. I didn't think that would kill him. Yeah. Because there was some stuff I felt like it was wasted. Like he had the really cool, his like really cool, like I think it, the second in charge, like thing. the weird looking alien dude with the um the face thing. I don't know. It's hard to uh, two two tubes. Yeah, two tubes. He was really cool and I was like, he kinda did nothing. Yep. He got an action figure. <laughs> he got an action figure. <laughs> of course he did. <laughs> he did. Um no S- Saw is a is another like interesting part of the movie, of course, because it's the first time they've taken a character from extended universe. They took a character from the Clone Wars animated series and brought him in as a live action version. And this is something I can see happening probably in the continuing movies. I wouldn't be surprised if there's something like this happening in the Han Solo movie because it's just old things working together. And I love it personally. Um, when they now, when then I was like, "That's Saw Gerrera." I was like, "Fuck, that's really cool." Um, how did how did everyone else feel about this? Like when they knew, did it affect the movie at all for anyone, buddy? Saw Gerrera. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was kind of yeah. I didn't. I thought it, I was kind of expected him to be in the movie a lot, a lot more than what kind of built up. Especially casting Forrest Whitaker, like such a, yeah. I guess, a prominent actor in that role, and then to kind of have it end prematurely is like, wow, what was your what was your purpose in this kind of really? So for the prequel yeah, I, movie to Rogue One. <laughs> Sorry, it's not going to happen. We're going to get prequel st- movie to Rogue One. Yeah. <laughs> Um, they have stuck him in like six episodes of Star Wars Rebels at this point. With like, Forrest so Whitaker? Presu- or? Sh- Forrest Whitaker, yeah, it's, it's him. Does so he have I a lazy eye? When they signed him. No, yeah, I think he does. I can't. Yeah, I yeah. presume Did so. Did they explain it's, how he's, he became He's actually Forrest really Whitaker, good. Like, yeah. I give. The reason they cast such a good actor to play the role is because I think they wanted some, the, someone to do these Rebels episodes before. Because in Rogue One, Sora is playing. Um, Forrest Whitaker is playing Saul Guerrero completely batshit crazy. Like, he's he's basically off the ladder at this point. In Rebels, it's like a couple years before this point. He's still crazy, but not as crazy. And Forrest Whitaker is, like, a good enough actor that he was able to Time, dial it yeah. back for the performance. And I remember the first episode of Rebels he was in, I was like, fuck, I'm so glad they got him to do this because straight away I could tell he was toning it back from what his performance was in Rogue One. And I just appreciated that quite a lot for that character. It's like a good arc to have him sl- to get worse and worse as the time gets closer to Rogue One. Um, but yeah. Uh, Ash, do you have anything on Saw Gerrera? It was cool. That was like I like that he had what asthma. <laughs> I like that he had, had asthma. asthma. <laughs> <laughs> that was the real reason that he uh, he died is because he dropped his inhaler and he couldn't find it and he couldn't run away. Yeah. All, all that all sand covered him and he was just coughing. <laughs> <laughs> His suit's interesting because it's basically like a Vader suit without the like the full. It's like thing. a junk. Like he's lost. It's a junk. He's lost the suit. leg and everything like that. So it's like mm. it's getting there, and he's got the breathing apparatus, but he doesn't have it on constantly. Like he has to pull it out, whereas Vader's is built into the mask and stuff. Obviously, are there more Saw Gerrera books? No, but they should put one out. Yeah. I'll read that shit. I'll read anything. Let's be honest. Um, to- let's talk about another one of the the big controversies, or like people love to hate it, which is the. The Tark and stuff. And every, I personally think it's it's fine. Like, it, watching it, 
especially, I swear I noticed it a lot more watching it up res to 4K on my TV than I ever did watching it in the cinema, and like a lot closer or something like that. The CGI sticks out a lot worse than I remember ever seeing it in the cinema, and I saw it twice in the cinema, and every time I've watched it on Blu-ray, it's been way more noticeable. I love all the scenes between Krennic and Tarkin, and I love their their arcing story in this and their history and how those two are like very different types of leaders inside the the empire Mm. and stuff like that. Um, I think the CGI and the facial capture is it's, it's good enough to be passable. And the, I think the part that makes it possible is they got a good actor to do Tarkin and the mannerisms and the voice and stuff like that. And that gives it a tick. Does anyone else love it? or hate it, buddy. I uh, yeah, pretty much agree. It was good enough to kind of, make it work. I found it a little, yeah. a little bit more noticeable when you've, of, of course, when he first rocks up, but then he has an appearance later on in the movie and it's almost, I don't know, because if it, how the scene was and what, how the background lighting was or, you know, what was in the background. But later on in the movie, it kind of just gelled a bit more than what it did initially. So, yeah, good enough. Kieran? I, um, I actually think the movie really benefits from having that character in it. The CGI mm. wasn't amazing. Like, you could tell it was CGI, but it still... It enhanced it. Like, there's not there's not a bigger fuck you moment than, you know, after testing the Death Star on, um, <laughs> on Jakku for... Jetta. Jetta. So I keep getting the two messed up. They're both Jason. God damn it. Um, after testing the Death Star on Jetta and then being like, Krennic, great job, but this is now mine. It's like yeah. <laughs> it's like the biggest fuck you ever. So um, yeah, I think the movie's improved by that kind of. I just wish there was more. I wish there was more Darth Vader and him stuff. What, I, Darth I need Vader to, and Tarkin. Uh, yeah, Darth Vader and Tarkin because that. Um, I know there's a really interesting relationship there, and I was hoping to see that more in a movie. Um, you can read the book. I Tarkin can. To get I more can of that. read by the James Lucino. I can read the book. <laughs> But I was I was hoping there would at least be some of that in this movie as well. Yeah. We need to get a Ash- book sponsorship just so yeah. yeah. Fuck I if I some if we get the sponsorship and I don't have to pay for Star Wars books anymore, life sorted. <laughs> Ash, what do you think of Tarkin? I think it worked fine. I mean, especially watching it back to back. I mean, it looked pretty solid. It looked pretty similar to the actor, so they did a pretty solid job. But yeah, yeah. I think it worked. I think the character was. I think it would have been just as jarring if it had been played by another actor. So, yeah, that's that's. Probably I think a good it was point. a like if they no if way they just win. yeah like a similar looking actor, but you could tell straight away it wasn't him. Yeah. Everyone would just be like, "You shouldn't have had him in the movie anyway." Just like fucking. So that's, yeah, no, it's just like one. Why of those didn't you do it with CGI? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> think, yeah they, they probably couldn't have pleased everyone. That's true. They probably um, could have uh, I- not done the princess layer at the end. Is the only thing? Yeah, that's the probably the worst one. That's like yeah. where they they're like can't be fucked putting as much effort in as we did for all those Tarkin scenes. <laughs> so we, we won't. And the movie's gonna be out in a couple months. So eh. hey, guys, but working on Battlefront Two. Can we have your character model for a second? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that's pretty much what it looks like. Um, one of my favorite scenes in the movie is the Jin scene where she gets to see Galen. Like the saw gr- delivers the. Mm-hmm. The hologram thing and him giving the thing because a I love Mads Mikkelsen he's one of my favorite awesome. actors he's amazing and one of the biggest disappointment disappointments to me of this movie was I didn't get as much of Mads as I I wanted in my life and I can probably never have enough Mads to be honest I also think that it's just a really emotionally powerful scene and it's it. I love what it does to Jin. Like when Jin collapses at the end of it after watching it all, it's just a really great th- scene. But it also is the scene that in an, a minute or in a half to two minutes has Galen fill that hole that Ash was talking about before, like the plot hole of the thing. And they explain it in such a way. It's like, we call it the Death of Star. And it's the, uh, we've got a hole. I've built a hole in the system, blah, blah, blah. I remember sitting in the cin- cinema the first time watching it and just being like, oh, makes sense. Like it's yeah. it's the, at this moment that you in the cinema or watching it, if you wait until VOD or Blu-ray to watch the movie, it's at this scene that you either go, that makes sense or fuck, that sh- that's like such a shit excuse for why there was a hole in it. <laughs> but I think most people like liked the, the reason given. I guess it was they? the, it was the almost the best possible reason they could give for it to be there. Yeah. Um, like you had to, it was, it's kind of like you either accept that answer or you accept that whoever designed the Death Star is a terrible, terrible person. Yep. Yeah. Buddy, 
Yeah, what do pretty, you think pretty about much the agree. Out of, out of all the things that they kind of try and retcon in, in this movie, that, you know, whether they're relevant or not and whether you have to see them and how important they are to A New Hope, this is the, the absolute main 100% one that, you know, absolutely needed to be answered and deserved to be there. So, yeah, I liked it. It's good. And Ash, you, I've already said great. you liked it, yep. so we don't hear about you. We don't hear from you. Don't anymore. need to hear my voice. Don't need to hear from you. There's anything Ash is saying. <laughs> um, another scene that I, re- I really love is the Battle of Above Scarf for several reasons. Number one, it's the, the best ba- space battle scene we have in Star Wars, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, number two, it also offers a really fantastic scene where you have all these new ships and characters come flying in and they've got new actors and new footage of them all playing and then they've incorporated this footage from New Hope from deleted scenes and stuff like that to have the squadrons from that movie appear and it all just moves seamlessly. And then, if you're also an animated fan, they stuck the Ghost, which is the ship from Star Wars Rebels, in there as well. So there is a quick couple seconds where you have new actors playing new characters, old actors that are dead, um, playing old characters, <laughs> and then there's the animated shit. And it's just like this really like cumbersome collective scene of here's everything that's new and old and just everything Star Wars coming together. And um, it's really great. And then you get into the space battle, of course, which is, I think, fantastic, seeing all the ships flying, trying to take down the thing. And you get proper space battle stuff, and then you get proper, like, uh, on the above on ground and combination. It is the best. And that's what they wanted when they sold that mo- this movie to us. It was always pitched as, this is a war movie. This is a war movie. And you're watching through most of the movie where you're like, I get like the gritty feel of it kind of being set during a war period, which it is, um, from Jin and everyone kind of stuff like that. But we hadn't got to a proper war scene until the end of the movie. And when we get to the Scarf battle, it is like a long half an hour or more proper war battle scene and i think it's fantastic uh, yeah. buddy yeah it's really reminiscent of um return of the jedi how they're having the space battle up top and they've kind of got their yeah. objective and you know <clears throat> rebels have their objective as well on endor so mm-hmm. yeah it's one of the, yeah it's the highlight it's, it's the highlight of the movie that last half an hour i think this yeah the the, the pay the payoff of everything else that's come come before that so i think that totally makes the movie worthwhile well, i know for me because i don't you know don't consume any of the extended universe stuff and for me, this is just extra Star Wars. It's just like a, it's kind of like a treat, really. It's not essential to building anything important that happens to New Hope for me because you viewed that before already. Um, but yeah, that, like you said, it's a war movie. This is the payoff, and it's yeah, it's brilliant. Karen, I guess um, I really love this scene. I love the whole that half an hour. My favorite things about it are like some of the smallest details though. Like they had the, even though it was a tiny bit on the nose and I wish it had been like maybe hidden just a little bit more. I really liked the um, the character that was um, Luke's call sign dying. And then so there yeah. is that space for him um, in the Death Star battle. That's cool. I like that. My second is something that, I guess I find in, I've always found spaceship designs really interesting in Star Wars because yeah. they're so well thought of, they're so um, interesting and diverse that it had never occurred to me before watching Rogue One that they had built a spaceship that was just built to freaking ram shit. Yeah. That was like, awesome. like, <laughs> like the most, like, you know, we have lasers, we have rockets, we have missiles, we have all this shit. We're just going to yeah. charge into them and ram it. And it's not even yeah. like the crew that is piloting that ship is not even like it's like a suicide, like, you know, Mm-mm. if you explain it, it's just That's like a, job. It's like just like a normal, like, proper, like, prim and proper, yeah. like, proper rebel setup and everything. It's not like some crazy guy is going, yeah, we're going to charge into him. It's just Japanese literally. Japanese designed. Yeah, like, it's yeah. just literally, just literally normal rebel soldiers piloting this ship to crash into another ship, which I think is fantastic, and I really enjoyed that. Um, that, that sequence, sh- yeah. That sequence in the movie, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Uh, Ash? Yeah, it just fits so well perfectly, like, all the different levels of the of the fight, so it it paid off. I mean, it's beautiful. So it's, beautiful. It's beautiful. 
It's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're getting in, getting into like the big build up, the the last of the the last bit of the scarf scene, which basically I consider the last the finale of Scarf to start at the moment when Jin begins climbing up that structure and where she has to do like the weird jump through the, the, the doors that are constantly closing so she doesn't chop her legs off thing. There's yeah. like a point where the music starts to kick in and it's my second p- favourite part of music and it's like the dinner, 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 dinner. It's like this really like tension building piece and this is when Jin starts climbing. I was going to say that sounded yeah. like Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> it's well it's probably ri- every piece of music's probably ripped off from girls let's be honest <laughs> yeah um, it starts to swell so yeah. we yeah <laughs> we get uh we get this build up through uh Jin climbing up this up towards the tower and then we start getting into all the the characters dying one by one you know Bodhi dies to a grenade being thrown in uh Chirrut, Chirrut dies to the death uh death troopers and so does Baz and all this sort of thing how does everyone feel about like this, because they pretty much they didn't like randomly kill off one character like twenty minutes before, like at the start of the battle, and just like spread them all out. It's pretty much a dead, 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 yeah. dead, dead. They kind of just go knock, like, knock him off one by one. And this is the true Suicide Squad movie of the year, which was the joke, but it is true. Um, does it does it hit people? Is it kind of boring to watch? Do you, do you remember getting, especially the first time watching it? Do you remember getting like any emotional? attachment to any of the characters that when they were died you actually got a little bit sad about any of them or was it kind of like because you knew they were probably going to die you never got attached to any of them watching the movie i, I guess think as, okay. as soon as Everybody k2 k2 so bad. Died. All bad as soon as you k2 so died, <laughs> died a man I was heartbroken <laughs> ash is like i can't <laughs> handle my heart's breaking let me talk robot. about k2 so <laughs> <laughs> well, that robot died and he and Jin just got, like, nice to each other. Yeah. She gave him a pistol. She handed him a gun. Yeah. That was it? So that was the one? The, yeah. The, the, well, that, the damn that, robot? That's like, the, oh, the this... The empire He's going to die. Everybody else is going to be fine. And then they all die. So I think it was, like, maybe the third or fourth one in. You're like, oh, shit. Nobody's going to live through this. Yeah. So, yeah. It was great. Buddy? Uh, not Yeah, I don't know. I didn't really get too emotional because I kind of assumed that everyone was just going to die. There was no other real way anything... It was going to happen. You couldn't leave loose threads, you know. Why didn't they pop up in A New Hope? Why didn't this happen? Um, so for me... And, and I didn't get too attached to them in that movie as well. Maybe maybe because I always knew that was going to happen in the, in the end, but... You're protecting yeah. yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, protecting Don't... my feelings. Yeah. Uh, Kieran? Uh, I guess mine's changed. Because I remember the first the first two times I watched this movie once in the cinema and when I got the Blu-ray, it was the deaths of uh, Baz and... Uh, Ch- Chirrut or however we're saying yeah, his name. Yeah, Chirrut or however the name's Chirrut. pronounced. Um, it Don't was again. their deaths because I really enjoyed those characters the most and I think um, like Chirrut's deaths, really interesting, but I can't help, like I almost make myself laugh every time he, it happens. Like, I feel really bad for it because... I always imagine him hitting the wrong switch on that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I always imagine him hitting this the wrong one or something. You're um, a terrible person. I am a terrible person. Um, but, um, but and then you know Baz's reaction after his death, um, I felt was really you know even though you'd only known these characters for so long, going back to the point of you could really tell that there was a strong relationship between the characters um, really showed through. But on this watching, um, Bodhi's death really sucked. Like, when I was watching it, and I don't know why I never really... For some reason, I remember Bodhi going out in a blaze of glory for some reason. But no... He kind of does, because he basically saves the day No, no, but he does, like, he does the communication... And then I can remember him, like, for some reason, like, shooting the turret of the ship, for, like, at a bunch of stormtroopers. And I don't know why I do. And and then there's just... Yeah, I've just made Fucking up... Fucking making up scenes. I've just scenes. making up scenes <laughs> in my head. And then it was just a no. Some random stormtrooper threw a grenade in there and he died because of it. It's like, shit. Like a real war. Yeah, like, it wasn't even, like... Like a real It war. wasn't, like, some amazing heroic death. It was It was just, you know... Shit got fucked. Yeah. Um, I, Chirrut 
Chirrut and Baz are the only two that I remember in the cinema the first time being like, oh shit, they were the only two characters I thought had a chance of living solely because they weren't part of the rebellion. So I'm like, they could survive and you'd never, they could just fuck off to some other part of the galaxy and they would have never had to explain where they were because they, mm. I would have been like, that's fine, but they killed them off. Um, the only of it, and the scene that did get me the first time watching it as well was seeing Jin and Cassian just like, because it's like this kind of, disgustingly beautiful blast type thing like like a nuke yeah. bomb coming off in the distance and those two one thing i really hated was people i kept reading online people being like oh why did they suddenly start like g- getting into each other at the end of the movie like i'm like what like just because they're hugging in the moment of death like all of a sudden they were like there was this sexual tension that people were seeing that i wasn't I'm like why can't they just be hugging the two remaining people are into their, their death. I found it really weird. I think like, for me, is... the scene that confused me about where their relationship was at is if they were trying to suggest a romantic connection or not was the scene just before that in the... Um, elevator? In the elevator with like were the they're just looking at each other? Yeah, they're just looking at each other. That's, that's the scene that got kind of um, like that just... You could interpret that. Yeah, you can interpret that different ways. Like, yeah, it is a solemn moment of, you know, hey, we know we're going to die. Um, yeah. Well, that's what I took it yeah, as. Like, but it we're could... about to die. I hope you realize that. Like, it's just like looking like you know what's happening, right? Yeah. 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 Which we're I, about you, to die. When you, wh- <laughs> we're about to die. Let's make out. That's, yeah, that's right. That's what, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's what everybody else in the cinema was thinking. Was thinking. Is that what you do, Ash, if you was I about know, to die? I guess. Whoever's closest to you. Hey. Hey, girl, guy, what if you're into? <laughs> I, I don't want to see this happen now. <laughs> no, you want to see the world end? No, oh I want to see, like, Ash in this position of the world ending. <laughs> God. Uh. Um, talking, about, <laughs> talking about, like, uh, beautifully poetic, I love the... There's the shot where Krennic is looking up at the Death Star yes. and Tarkin's, like, looking down. And even though they aren't directly looking at each other, it is amazing because they're basically looking at each other he's getting killed by krennic's getting killed by the weapon he spent his whole life obsess- obsessing over that's killing him and then we know watching that movie that only a while to, a while later tarkin due to his complete idiocracy to like believe in the the possibility of there being a a, a malfunction in the the death star or whatever he also dies in the weapon he spent most of his life obsessing about and it's just I think it's this really great moment. And the way they shoot it with them looking down and looking up at each other, recognizing, like Krennic recognizing that Tarkin's probably staring down at the planet about to kill him and stuff like that. It's this, yeah, I think it's like one of my top uh, shots from the the thing. And their their relationship I find really interesting. And if you can, I, I hate saying, honestly, like read the books, but... Uh, you can get more about their relationship from the the prequel novel and stuff like that, and they basically just hate each other's guts so much because it's like one's a, a war, like a, a war general type dude trying to take on stuff, and the other one's very much a like book person, like f- good at good at organizing stuff and whatever, but not a military head, basically. Who's like super obsessed with the emperor? Yeah, yeah. Um, I like that the. Have- the- the actual firing of the Death Star beam was like shot for shot the exact same as in the New Hope. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty Oh, cool. the, the attention to detail to make sure everything feels like a New Hope and in Rogue One is one of yeah. its major pluses. Because even though it looks newer, feels like different, especially when you watch them back to bat, but like shots like that and the way certain stuff plays out and the sounds and everything like that, of course, is just, that's the part that makes you feel like you're, you're back in that era, mm. I guess. All right, unless anyone has anything else to say, we're going to jump on to the, the last scene of the movie. I have two which... super quick points to make <laughs> yep. sure that we spend an hour on this one movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, one, did R2-D2 and C-3PO really need to be in this movie? No. No. Nope. Their, their little cameo was the most annoying thing in the world. Nope. I, was like, I hate it. Yep. I, was I like, didn't feel like mentioning it, but yeah. Two, is Leia's um, timeline or Leia's like, location really confusing? Because for some reason, I thought she was on Alderaan. But no, I'm because guessing... her dad goes and gets her. Yeah, but yeah, but she must be on Endor because, um, because then she's on the ship with R two D two and C three PO. Yeah, she's on a what? diplomatic mission. 
Yeah. Yeah, but does that? I thought she was right. So are we saying she was already on Endor? She wasn't on Alderaan. She's not on Endor. No one's on Endor. But C three. Why did you say Endor? And, and are you talking about Yavin? Yavin. Right? Pardon? You're talking about Yavin. Yavin. Sorry, Yavin. Not Endor. Sorry. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yeah, like what the fuck? Did I did I miss something? Pronunciation no, in I Star Wars does matter a sorry, little bit. Sorry, sorry, audience. Those, <laughs> those aren't uh, her droids. Those droids were probably brought there by her father. Okay, but her father had already left. Not. A, so you can just leave them there. They're just like here, leave them help. They are probably also those. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm trying to work it out for you to so it makes sense. He leaves. The, the droids are left with Wedge, and not no, not Wedge. Antilles, but not the Antilles. There's two characters called like there's one on the ship, and then there's the one. It's just really confusing. We don't need to talk about the. There's Star Wars made a really weird decision to use character names twice for different characters, main characters, and it becomes really weird. And just like why wouldn't why can't you just name different characters different names instead of using the same fucking name? Um, but he was probably left in charge of the droids because he's the captain of the the ship that she's on, basically. So if he was if he was left at Yavin Four when when he yeah okay we're just, just gonna <laughs> <laughs> you see my point though it's convoluted it's it's convoluted but it, you can work it out if you like think think it makes sense if you, if you like force he, he it to left. make sense yes yeah yeah I mean, it's not forcing it it's just like all right putting all dots together let's have some um help. so the, the only last scene to talk about and I don't think there's much to say because everyone everyone here's probably screamed about it enough uh, it's the scene even if people hated Rogue One pretty sure everyone loved the Vader scene yeah of course and that's like yeah. Yes, it's like though. one of the greatest Star Wars scenes ever, and it's it seems the first time you watch it, it seems like it's a lot longer than what it is, and then when you yeah. rewatch it, you're like, like that oh, scene's only thirty short. seconds. Yeah, it's not long at all. It's just one yeah. hallway. I thought it was like several. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but get smart. All I want, the only I'm, I used to hate the idea. People would be like, Vader solo movie, and I'm like, no, I don't care about a Vader, Vader solo movie. If you do a Vader solo it's movie, but make it from the points of like a Rebels on like a base and make it like John Carpenter's The Thing where Vader's the monster and it's scary <laughs> and it's basically constantly shot like that, I'm fucking in. <laughs> I'm only, like the only reason I'm not a huge fan of that scene is because, and I know people have gone out of their way afterwards to try and explain it, but I don't like the... The difference in Vader from that scene to the to the opening scene in New yeah. Hope. I know it's based on I know it's because of the age of a New Hope and everything, but the difference in like the character movement and everything is super jarring. Or even Yeah, well they Yeah. Yeah, even in a New Hope, the first thing you see is the stormtroopers come through, whereas in at the end there it's obviously Vader going in head first. Yeah. Yeah, so there's there's I think there's some things they can't even but, try and retcon and it's just like yeah. Like, some people, some we people got to put this cool Vader thing in. We've, we just have to. Because I asked this online when when it originally came out, and people were like, "Oh, well, you see, it had been so long since he'd been in his chamber that he was running low on power." Blah blah blah. blah. And I'm like, "Okay." His stamina wheel had run out. Okay. <laughs> the, yeah. All right. So let's on that note. Let's jump into New A New Hope then. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the uh, the first thing I want to do is give a shout out to in case anyone wonders, there is like a couple minutes that the the only time between Rogue One and New Hope is about two minutes. And in uh, is there a story a telling of, us what happened in the yes, two minutes from a from a certain point of view? The Star Wars sh- short story book, <laughs> which by the way, when this episode goes live, uh, we're giving away a copy of that book, so you can go on our fucking social media stand to that. Can I have it? Yeah, and no, use are all fucking out of what it. What buddy? Is he allowed uh, to win it? No, I don't want maybe, it. Yeah, no, if he wants to, <laughs> um, he doesn't read. There's there's a short <laughs> yeah there's, there's a short story in that book. I think Gary Witter wrote it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Gary Ritter wrote it, and it basically just covers the the two minutes between them, and it's it's not like big eventful, but it's just like a nice like tension piece of people being like, "What the fuck? What the fuck? What the hell, Vader? Oh my god! Oh, our ship got shot once!" Like our, they try to explain like why they break out of hyperspace. It's like, "Oh, they got one shot off against us before we entered hyperspace. They like destroyed our hyperspace drive, and we we dropped out, and then they're." They're so close to Tatooine and Leia's like, oh, we'll go. We're going to make it. And then all of a sudden Vader's ship pops out of hyperspace. And they're like, we're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> that actually and brings up something the, I wanted to talk about. 
How does spa- yeah. hyperspace work? What do you because mean? like, like- in, when, in when they're flying out of Jeddah, he's like, oh, I don't know. I haven't done all the calculations. And Cassie's like, fuck it. Because you have to like-, like... And then Han Solo's like, oh, we can't jump until we figure out all the calculations. Even though, like, you're moving at quote-unquote hyperspeed, like at you hypers- still hit stuff. At light speed, you can still hit shit. Like, you see, there was, like, ships when Darth Vader's ship appeared. Ships crashed into it as they went into a hyperdrive yeah. because... All of a sudden yeah. it came up. That's why he was, yeah. So like, in episode seven where Han just goes into hyperspace in the middle of fucking nowhere and somehow doesn't die, uh, that's that was like a 0.5% chance of them surviving that, basically. Or like or, when he like, crash lands on the exact planet. Percentages. <laughs> yeah, or when he crash lands on the planet. Like these are all very Han Solo things to do where he is just lucky as old fuck until he's not lucky and he fucking dies. And, but they're, they're very like Han uh, Solo things. I don't know that, if that had luck yeah, had anything to do with it. Yeah, I don't know. Just, <laughs> it was unlucky funny. that it hit a vital organ. <laughs> um, Have you seen Sliders, so- Ash? Have you seen the TV show Sliders? No, I haven't. No, well, it's it's kind of like Sliders. Once they get the portal, they, they just jump into the portal and they arrive in a different parallel universe. They don't get to choose. They just bang. Hyperspace. Yeah, right. yeah we got close enough. Um, <laughs> people, I, think when the, I think when the original movies came out, hyperspace people thought was like an instantaneous black hole thing. Like you go... And then, like a second later, you're like, Psh, yeah, yeah, the other side, like, like a gate type system. But it is you're in hyperspace. But if you've got long distances of space to travel, it's still going to take you hours or days or whatever. It's not yeah. an instantaneous travel um, speed. And when they're like plotting the courses, it, it is because they have charted maps that everyone, ha- I presume, everyone has access to. Like, it's just local... It's just knowledge you get with ships that show you what directions to point in for hyperspace routes mm. and stuff like that. And in the Star Wars universe, there is parts of space that is just called, like, uncharted space. And there are, like, characters in the books that go exploring in that, and that's considered dangerous, I suppose, as it would be to, like, an Indiana Jones exploring a, a cavern that's uncharted or something like that where it's not mapped out because it could be dangerous. And p- people people go out there to try and map out the unknown regions of space, but most people won't travel out there because you, you could run into anything. Or if you had to, if you got so far out and you had to make your way back and you tried to use hyperspace, you might hit something and crash or all sorts of things. So that's the hyperspace. I guess it's, it's something. All right. So starting a new hope, the, the, the thing that's really cool after watching uh, Rogue One before it is I love the when you get to the last paragraph in the New Hope opening crawl where it's like, uh, Rebel Spies have just blah, 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 escaped the thing, the thing, thing. And you, you read that paragraph and you're like, I just saw that. That's a, that's, that's a thing that I, I just know that happened now because basically the, the pitch of Rogue One was take that end paragraph and just stretch it out into an, an entire movie. And it's, it's just kind of a cool moment to be like, I know who those characters are they're talking about now, and I know the history, and it just little tiny moments that make it really cool. If you buy the uh, iTunes version, it's got a little asterisk at the end and says, see Rogue One, and it has a hyperlink to buy the... Oh, does it really? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I was about to be like, what the hell? <laughs> got him. <laughs> you, you did got me. I was like, that sounds like something I'd fucking do. They should have troll level. Do. Next edition. <laughs> Um, so talking about Vader when he burst in, the, the only explanation I, I can give for his whole thing, and I think we talked about this in episode one, is he basically comes in and watching it straight after Rogue One, the first time he talks to Leia, and Leia's like, "I'm on a diplomatic mission." He's basically like, "You bitch, you're part of the rebellion. I'm sick of your fucking lies. Fuck off." Because he says it like he points, he's like, "You're part of the rebellion. You're a liar. God fucking damn it. Give me the plans. Bye. Go, go to your and room." It's, um, it's like the yeah. kid that you like watch smash a window and they run away down the street around the corner. You catch them and you're like, I just saw you like smash a window and they're like, no, no I didn't. It's the, <laughs> it's the only explanation I've been given that makes any sense to me because people were like, why, why is Vader so... In the original trilogy, people always question, why is Vader at the start of New Hope angrier there than he is for at the entire rest of any of the movies? And after Rogue One, people were being like, well, it kind of makes sense now because he just had these people literally run off right in front of his face after stealing stuff. He then gets on the ship and everyone's just lying to his face and he's just like, I'm fucking had it up to here with the man. Oh, he is like, I'm so sick of your shit. Um, so that's like the only explanation for the, 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 the difference in the way he walks and stuff. I just like zone out because I'm just like, 
the suits, the costume design and like how comfortable and ease it would be to walk in them now and do stunts and whatever else and fight in them compared to back when they made it in 77 or 76, whenever they filmed it would be way, 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 way different. It would be cumbersome. I think the, I think the solution to this problem is really easy. They yeah. remake a new hope. No. Don't <laughs> remake <laughs> Emperor Strikes Back. I don't like this little smirk you got happening on your face with your <laughs> blasphemous speaking happening over here. It's going to happen. They're going to run out of ideas. Nope. Yep. They will not. 20 years. Yeah, nope. It's going to happen. Nope. nope. Would it be a weird, would it be a weird world where <laughs> it's like a new hope looks newer than the prequel movies? That'd be weird. It does though, doesn't it? That's, That's something, yeah. That's weird. Is that something you, you know, like? Was that something that came to your head when you was because we're watching I, the prequels? Whenever I watch stuff it, like whenever I, I've always felt this way. Whenever I've watched it, it's like you have to turn that part of your brain off. But there's some technology or like stuff they're using in in like A New Hope and in the original saga, the original trilogy, where you're like, how did how did this come from what's in the first three? Like how like did the this- pixel. The pixel yeah. graphic, yeah. Like, how did this devolve navigating. so badly? How did this happen? <laughs> what did everybody just be like? Tape recorders are clearly better, and like, just like it's floppy just, disks. Floppy, we need floppy disks. disks. <laughs> we need more floppy disks. It's just, it's just confusing and just. <laughs> I will say on the uh, like, just the general sense of the film, like the way it's filmed and stuff like that, especially compared to the after watching the prequels, one thing I noticed w- watching them so close again is watching all the prequels, which George Lucas directed, th- very still shots. L- they're very smooth shots or just like stationary shots. There's n- not too much crazy stuff happening. There's not huge sweeping crane shots or any handy cam or stuff like that. But I remember uh, when, R- when R2 is going along the-, the sand after crashing and he runs into the Jawas for the first time in the cracks there, it is a bunch of handheld camera footage and stuff like that. And it just feels really weird to picture the same George Lucas that did this, and this movie is very real, it's lots of sets and, you know, the effects, and he's got this handy cam footage, and it just feels a lot more raw and alive. And then you watch any of the prequels, and it's plastic and still, and a lot of it's just so boring and bland and it's got way more colors and better costume designs and stuff like that sure but the world just feels so much more faker in those movies compared to to this one which had like a tenth whatever the hell of the budget is and it's it's just like oh god how did we get there how did george just one of those moments i guess Mm. does anyone else have any thoughts on the like the re-watching this thinking about the differences between all these movies and the way they're shot and made and stuff like that yeah, George Lucas was probably senile by then, so he's like, oh, just rely on all the CGI, <laughs> so yeah, just do that. No, yeah. don't move the cameras, let's just sit here and do one shot, so that's probably what happened. Laziness. Can't yeah. be fucking moving cameras, just stick it right. at the end of the corridor, have the characters walk towards it. <laughs> don't, don't, doesn't matter how good this is, uh, everyone's going to see it, just bust, get it out. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's he fell in love with CGI something yeah. crazy, mm. and I mean... Did everyone watch the... What version of New Hope did everyone watch? That is a question we should probably ask, actually. I OG. had to watch the... For some reason, the only copy I had was the one where they had added all the... All the Because okay, I'm watching the Blu-ray one. Yeah, I'm watching yeah, the Blu-ray. Blu-ray, which has all the CG yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah. With the but speeder it, in the in the town? Yeah yeah. 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 That was pretty awful. Yeah, you said... When, when I mentioned it last week, you were like, I can't remember or I don't think I've seen that before. And we were like, oh, you will. You will notice yeah. it. Like I think the I, last one I watched was either on VHS or DVD, like around <laughs> when the first ep, it first came out, and then probably just catching bits and pieces on TV. But, oh my goodness! Yeah. <laughs> uh, which which version was you watching, buddy? The non CGI as well. Non CGI. Yeah, I downloaded it. Oh goodness! <laughs> <laughs> uh, in my defense, I do I, I do own them all on Blu-ray, but um, since packing packing my house, uh, they're all in, they're all boxed up and. Uh, yeah, I just couldn't be stopped finding him. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I, I mean, for the most part, what the the Blu-rays. I'm like the Blu-rays. They look good. Like, and in in a whole across all three of the original movies, there are some things I can point out, especially in like episode five and six. I think where they've fixed stuff 
uh, be it Yoda or like other special effects, like the lightsabers in episode four, even the lightsabers uh, have been fixed and they look way better because they look more like prequel, way brighter and stuff like that compared to the original ones. All that sort of stuff. I'm like, great. I don't mind all these changes. But then you do have like the Tatooine scene where they, they're coming across the abundance of where George just went control C and then control V to a bunch of stormtroopers and fucking shit just all across the screen. Droids You're like, past them. Yeah, droids oh, just, just walking past. The worst and one shit. for me isn't the droids and stuff. It's like the, it's cr- Jabba. It's the creatures and Jabba. Oh, Jabba. And Jabba like, the Jabba is the worst oh, scene. Oh, you like, Did he shrink? Really? Jabba is the worst. Scene. I, I, <laughs> yeah, he's, he makes like a noise. It's like Han steps on his tail and Jabba's just like, oh! <laughs> it's like <laughs> this big character who's basically like the godfather of like the mob boss of fucking huts <laughs> and just had some random smuggler and step on his tail and the best he has is oh! like he didn't just go kill that No, guy. but is he like, like smaller than in the other on films? Fucking tail. It seems like it. No, I think it... I, I, I was trying to think of it as like maybe when he's sitting down because it's just like the tail's tucked up or whatever. He just looks better. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he, he got really depressed between A New Hope yeah. and Return of the Jedi. And he like bulked yeah. up. That's what happened. <laughs> That's Too right. many ice cream buckets after he broke up with his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the way of slavery. <laughs> yeah. Um, coming off Rogue One. One of the interesting things about watching New Hope is when we get to the the council room scene um, where Vader's standing there and Tarkin's there and they're talking to the everyone else in that circular table and you can kind of go, I mean, this is just, we. it's nice to play along in your head. Like, that chair was probably where Krennic was supposed to sit, but he died not, like, only moments ago or, like, a, less than 24 hours ago, but he probably would have been sitting in that seat right now if he hadn't been killed on Scarif and... Uh, um, I think especially when you're watching the movie so close, it's like moments like that where you're like, bit, 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 that would have been really cool. The funny Karen? thing for me, I really, it's really funny now, and I don't know why I always thought this beforehand, it's really funny now to sit back and think how short Tarkin's command of that Death Star is. Yeah, it's very short. It's extremely <laughs> short. and I, Especially after Rogue One, because you now know. Yeah, like you know, days. it's literally like, like a couple of days, like a couple of days. Yeah. And that's that's ridiculous for me because I don't know why, but I feel like Tarkin would be some like originally Tarkin would be like this has been his ship, he's like been on it for ages, blah 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 blah. No, it's like three days. No, he was three days. He was in charge of the had Death it. Star, just not the weapon. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, if so, Tarkin worked. Tarkin was working on the Death Star for ages. Like if you. You see Tarkin, of course, at the end of episode three, standing there next to Vader. They they do one of those CGI shots even in episode three, but they never show a close-up, and he, he walks away before they go to the close-up mm-hmm. between Vader and Palpatine. And, yeah, it's, T- Tarkin was in charge of kind of putting it together, the materials and overseeing the, the general construction of the Death Star, whereas Krennic's job was the, the actual yeah. weapon okay. itself. So they that's what I'm saying. They both... The, these two characters spent their lives pretty much working on this this giant circular orb and died very quickly after it became operational. <laughs> it's, it's just, like, f- fucked up, really. But I don't care, because fuck them, they're evil characters. Bye. So, you know, it's... Oh, I've got a note here. Um, I'm not sure if it's from this movie or the last movie, but is there still a Senate? How is there still a Senate if there's an Emperor? I don't understand. If there's still a Senate, at this point, there's still a Senate. They, the Senate is dissolved some point before Leia is shown old around getting blown up i believe that's where like where it's mentioned that the senate's being dis- basically that's where you can think the senate's being dis- dissolved um how how is the senate not being dissolved because palpatine takes control in episode three but he just can't he doesn't make the move to dissolve the senate i guess until in rogue one they say we can't we've got to keep this they pretty much say at some point we've got to keep the Senate happy until the Death Star is actually operational because yeah. it's a thing where it's like if you piss off the Senate early before you have the Death Star, they could probably mount some kind of yeah. Well, it was basically the reason he wanted the weapon because so they start building the Death Star before the rebellion even begins, and people are always like because in New Hope it's it's sold to us as here's the Death Star, we're going to use this weapon to put an end to the, the rebellion because we're going to use it to, to kill off the rebels and inflict fear into the galaxy once again but yeah, when it was when it was starting to be built in episode 3 and the original plan was like 
I'm going to have the most powerful fucking thing ever up in the sky. And then if I say, and then the emperor can just say whatever he wants and no one will be able to say shit. Dissolve the Senate. Hey, you can't dis- do that. Shut up. I'll blow up your planet. Yeah. Like, so that's pretty yeah. much. Imagine that conversation. <laughs> oh, sorry. Excuse me. What's, what's your planet? Oh, my planet's older <laughs> run. Well, uh, yeah. We'll see you in about a couple of minutes, mate. <laughs> so, yeah. So I, I, in my mind, I always picture the scene where Leia's there right before Obi Wan getting getting blown up. I kind of picture there a Senate meeting happening at that point or something along those lines, and then they get word slowly as they're all in meeting that Old Wan just blown up, and then the whispers start around the room, kind of like, oh shit, 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 and then Palpatine's like, dissolved, and they're all like, ah, uh, fuck, like, <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna do? Shit. Um, so that's how I, they haven't really covered it in any material, like exactly how it goes down as far as how I'm amazing What's, now thinking about it is like, you know, Palpatine in his full like emperor get up, like getting around the Senate, like, you know, doing paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's doing paperwork. Oh, I need to sign this be. bill. <laughs> <don't think> so. <laughs> do it. Do it now. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. Um, well, I was going to ask a question. When I was watching the, the cantina scene, I never thought of this before, but I was trying to think what I originally thought when I was a kid watching the scene for the first time. And I can't remember, but I can't imagine it being anything other than what the mm. fuck am I watching? Because for some reason, when I was watching it again for this time, and I've watched obviously New Hope a bunch of times, when I'm watching it, I'm just like, what did anyone ever think watching this movie for the first time? Because they cut to a bunch of really weird looking characters. There's aliens that basically look like they have anuses on their face. Like there's weird bug looking monsters, all sorts of crazy stuff. And especially during the seventies, or it would have been like, what the fuck am I watching? And even when I was a, a little kid watching this, I would have been like, what, what, what am I, what am I even watching? Does, does, does anyone here remember what they thought the first time I, watching this? Or I, thoughts on that? I don't remember what I was watching, but I always remember whenever I watch this, and I'm going to say something that's probably sacrilegious to you, Dylan. You've already said lots of sacrilegious. I'm just going to... This is probably the worst thing I could. I might say. Do you ever wish you could cut small parts of this movie out? Like, there's several sections we've already gone through that I'm kind of like, I kind of wish that was gone. And I kind of wish no. that was gone. Like, I, I wish I wish the whole... Um, I don't know those two characters' names that were in... Jedi, and then made it all the way to Tatooine. But face guy, yeah. and you want to cut their angry scene? man, Yonder Baba. Face guy, yeah, they have names. I can't remember. Yeah, nah, that's why you got to hire a they better Star Wars fan. Y- Yonder Baba is the guy that gets his arm cut off. <laughs> yeah, that's one of them. But yeah. and then well, the other guy's Doc. Get Doc. Cut because that scene is terrible. I hate that scene. Doc. Do you hate that scene? That's terrible. I'm like, why? No. Like we, we get to see Obi Wan cut off someone's arm. Yeah, Obi Wan's cut off someone's arm, but I'm just like, yeah, yeah. Not excited very easy. I don't know. Um, Ash, do you, do you remember what you, you no. ever thought watching this? Or no, it was just aliens. You know, what the, I bet. I ever, bet the executive was thinking just aliens. We're gonna sell a bunch of toys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Guido, and they did. So, yeah. Um, buddy, I don't remember, man. It probably would have been like twenty five years ago as a try as a, as a really small child. So, yeah, I got no idea. Can we all agree that the single best piece of music in the entire Star Wars franchise is the cantina no. music? Nope. Yes. Nope. Yes. It's pretty good. It's it's, yeah, it's, it's Jewel of the Fates. It's, but it's amazing. Okay. It's Jewel of the Fates. So. <laughs> Copyright. Shut up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> every time you, uh, anytime I marathon all these movies, it always weirds me out. Obi-Wan really weirds me out in this movie because here's a guy who took in Anakin at the age of what was probably eight or 10, got told he was too old. And then when he, he dies was probably thinking, oh, I fucked up by training that kid. Like what, a, what, a, what a stupid idea. Fucking Qui-Gon Jinn fucked me on that one, guys. Like I <laughs> should just listen to the council. Like, obviously that, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, God damn it. Like I shouldn't have traded that damn eight, eight year old or 10 year old, whatever he is. And then Obi-Wan in this movie is like, Hey Luke, Probably Way hitting over. puberty or whatever age you are. Like older, you're a teenager. Like 17, 18. Yeah, or, uh, I think he's yeah. like 16 or 17 or something like that. When do you think puberty like hits? But it's like, I don't know. Just, <laughs> that's what it felt like saying. <laughs> um, he's like, here's this way older kid and come along. Come along, the, the son of the evil 
lord that fucking went evil that was trained way beyond the date that the Jedi Council wanted me to train him at. But the son of that guy, I'll train you now and you're double the age he was when I trained him. Please, hold this lightsaber yeah. in my house. You've never used one before. <laughs> Just begin waving that fucking thing around. No problem, willy-nilly. Don't cut your hand off. Be really careful. No, Not you'll yet. Be okay. Let me just straight Good up lie to you this like, whole entire time as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just like Obi-Wan in this movie is so weird. And he, of course he is really weird because a lot of the things they did to that character, yeah. they didn't know when I was making this movie. However watching this movie in context of all everything we know that comes after and before this, Obi-Wan in this movie... Well, he has been really living weird. alone for how many years? Like, so what is going on? I get, you get a bit weird after that. Uh, he just wants to talk to someone. Too many. <laughs> I even talk think to people. that Obi-Wan in this movie is really weird compared to Obi-Wan in that Rebels episode. Mm. Mm. Like, that... I wish... Even though we only got a small snippet of him in that Rebels episode... That Obi Wan is heaps better than the Obi Wan we got, because the Obi Wan we got's confusing as fuck. Yeah, I'm a wizard. I'm a and wizard. I, uh, I'm a, it's old wizard Ben. Ken- I wonder if Ben Kenobi could be Obi Wan Kenobi. Old. Be really weird I've, I don't know if I've brought this up on this yes. podcast. It's you have. Favorite. Yes. <laughs> I'll do- <laughs> Worst person in disguise, incognito oh, ever. Tell me. Yeah. yeah. Worse. <laughs> He's supposed to be in hiding and he keeps his last name. Yes, thank you. Yeah. I wonder if Ben Kenobi and Obi Wan Kenobi uh, know each other. <laughs> no, no. It's even worse when you say it's old Ben Kenobi. Old Ben Kenobi. They, they, used to, they call him old Ben Kenobi. It's like, yeah. hmm, I wonder, I wonder if, if they're old related. Ben Kenobi could be old Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> and then when and then when Obi Wan's like, that's me. Luke's like, yeah, what a surprise! Oh, shit, really? <laughs> <laughs> what were the chances? <laughs> what Unbelievable. The force what covered the chances it up. That? The force covered it up. Yeah. Unless Kenobi's like the, the Smith. I was, yeah, it's the Smith, Smith name. It's the Smith <laughs> surname in the galaxy. That's what it is. <laughs> Everyone's Kenobi. It's like, oh, there's so many damn Kenobis around. Yeah. Yeah. It's really weird. I don't know. It was weird. The chances. It's disappointing that. that you didn't recognize R two D two. Or, or was yeah, he I being think, sly? Um, I, in my mind, I just retcon him. Pre- I, yeah, I, in my mind, yeah. I retcon it that he's being sly. Dementia. To, to help with that. <laughs> but that. Yeah. Just be like, or, or yeah. senile. Old <laughs> yeah. droids look the same. Hashtag not old droids. <laughs> <laughs> I also thought it was cool that they mentioned the Clone Wars. Maybe. I'd, I hadn't picked, didn't realise that. Yeah, that's yeah, that's one of the... Yeah. You didn't realise that? Yeah, it's like one of the things, Um, of course, when the, the prequels were coming out, everyone just... It's like, well, they've got to cover the Clone Wars because they mentioned that. They've got to mention, they've got to have the actual war because they talk about his dad being a general and Obi-Wan being a general. They, they mention all these things that you see in the prequels, but you just, they just didn't do it very well when they actually did the prequels. The Clone Wars sounds a lot more exciting when Obi-Wan speaks about it in this movie than it actually mm. is in that, the prequel movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, talking about Obi-Wan. Everyone likes to... This is another thing I was talking about. So this can tie into the the Rebels episode. The, the fight between him and Vader. Ever since the prequels came out, I know a lot of people have problems with that fight because they're like, why is it so slower and more placed out compared to the, the prequel? That's era what happens when you get old. A thousand one backflips in the air and all, all sorts of stuff like that. Slower. Well, it's not that. It's the, the same... It's the same reason I gave when we watched the Rebels episode where um, Obi-Wan fights Darth Maul, where they stare at each other for a long while, they do a couple quick quick lightsaber hits and then take each other down. Whereas even those two characters, when they fought during the Clone Wars episodes and Phantom Menace, were doing flips and stuff all over the back. And it's the same between Obi-Wan and Darth Vader, where it's proper samurai, which was where George based the lightsaber fighting on. It was like samurai fighting and stuff like that, where it's... These two characters know each other, know the fighting style so well, that kind of stuff, that they're constantly just playing out the moves in their head and they don't need to do all the flippy stuff and dodging and stuff like that. It's just more connecting and slower. So even though they didn't, uh, this wasn't what they were doing when they were making the fight, I think it makes sense in the scheme of Star Wars universe, especially because they've stuck to that with the Rebels episode between... Um, Obi Wan and Mole and stuff like that, but people are always looking for an explanation between for why their fight was kind of weird in the New Hope. What happened to Obi Wan? Also, why did he disappear? Where's the body? Well, he 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 came a he, he joined the Force. His whole body joined the Force. Straight up turned into a Force ghost straight away. Whoosh. 
Yep. On the spot. Peace out. But yep. then if why did Qui Gon Jinn have, have a body? The Jawas. <laughs> Yep. Why did Qui Gon Jinn have a body? Because they didn't decide to make him into a Force Ghost until years later, and they ha- they should probably re-edit that <laughs> in the Blu-ray. <laughs> did Yoda just he went disappear? into purgatory uh, and had to prove himself to get into Force Ghost Heaven first? Yeah, did, yeah. For for burdening, did, um, but for burdening Obi Wan with Anakin. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh, Fucking god! Sorry. Important point. Why didn't Obi Wan just like keep a pocket full of sand? <laughs> <laughs> I know Why your weakness. Just throw sand at Darth Vader. Just like throw, off sand. It, it, just throws off it. it at his eyes, but the, the mask time. doesn't go through the mask. No, no, but it, like <laughs> it would get like sucked into his breathing apparatus. He'd be really inconvenienced. He'd be pissed. Inconvenience. He'd be really <laughs> inconvenienced. Is your is your thing you just said? I <laughs> did. He would be super oh, inconvenienced, and then you stab him. And then it's like, then you us. know, job done. Job done. Saw <laughs> so, so Guerrero so pops up, gives uh, Darth Vader his inhaler. <laughs> you, can, you can have a puff of mine, man. <laughs> You'll be fine. Oh, my God. <laughs> this, this is, is, what, this is what happens an hour and a half into this podcast. Uh, no, this is what happens five minutes into any episode of Platinum Explosion. Yeah, so I'm not true. surprised at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, does anyone else have any uh, thoughts on New Hope watching it? Um, just general wrap ups or notes they took on it. Uh, impression if you haven't watched the movie for a few years, any thoughts and stuff like that, Ash? Yeah, like I said, it was kind of slow, especially like it took like eighteen twenty minutes before Luke was introduced. So, I that something I noticed. Like, yep. Maybe because I was like, oh crap, I don't have much time before we have to. Hope this starts getting along. I left it to the last minute to start watching these. Uh, yeah, and then the, at the end, they all seem to be very hunky dory. Han came in and saved the day, and everybody's so super happy to see him. But everybody was super pissed with him before. Yeah. So it's kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Characters in this yeah, movie are very are. forgiving, apparently. <laughs> um, Kieran? I guess my couple of these. What is the shout out to my favorite scene? That's probably my favorite scene for the wrong reason. Is the uh, and I I, I I thank my friend who showed me this every time when I watch it. But when they're entering the uh, when the stormtroopers are entering the prison area, and one of the stormtroopers like smacks his head <laughs> off the yep. door frame. <laughs> I replay it like three times every time I watch the movie. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> he likes. <laughs> At that point, I always have to like rewind to do it again because it's just so funny. <laughs> uh, if you do, if you don't know about that, audience members, tweet at me. I'll, Most people I'll show know about you. that yeah, scene. It's like Some a famous blue. I want to introduce film that room. to somebody's life. I want to do something oh good God. for once in my life. Um, <laughs> Anything else? Also, do you prefer if Han shot first or second? First, Gosh, Han shot first. I'd- I um, I don't care. Han shot accurately. Okay. That's all that matters. It, it yeah. If, as long <laughs> and as Guido didn't. His shot it. was terrible. Have you seen Guido's shot? Yeah, Guido misses by a mile. <laughs> it was the force, man. <laughs> Maybe the force like bounces it around. No, don't start that crap. <laughs> <laughs> um, buddy. Uh, yeah, I yeah took a few notes. Um, one of my favorite scenes was the Luke kind of getting out of his dwelling and overlooking the two, the two suns or moons. Yeah. And then the, oh, yeah. the beautiful shot, beautiful yeah. shot, soundtrack plays. Love that. Um, one of the funny moments was um, Obi Wan when he when he goes, "Oh, blast points uh, too accurate uh. for sand people. Only, in, <laughs> yeah. only Imperial stormtroopers are that precise." And I'm like, "Are you, are you kidding oh, me? Good joke. You, what kind of? He is senile. He, he must be Man, senile. Back in the day, that. stormtroopers uh. were so precise." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, the the other thing was, I found it really weird that they were burning the Jawa bodies. Did they explain that at no. all? No, no. They just flame trooper just burns everything. I mean, just the, picture they were just getting cold. Flame trooper just burn, <laughs> just burn everything. Why did they burn? Why did they bro- yeah, burn? Yeah, did they art, die through burning, or was it because their bodies didn't look like they were burnt? <laughs> Looked like they were eaten or something. Yeah, they burnt to a crisp. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's actually one that it's one of the most disgusting scenes in the movie, and I remember as a little kid it scared me. It's the reason New Hope scared me, is that scene. I was like, Ugh. I don't know. 
<laughs> I imagine I've just got the image of young, like little Dylan. Yeah, because didn't Star Wars didn't your parents play this while you're in the crib or something? I watched this first time when I was like four or five. When or you're four or five, like, yeah. sitting there playing, watching Star Wars, you see these two like gross like figures, and you're just like, Ugh. <laughs> 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 sucks on farm. <laughs> 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 The scariest moment of my life, people. <laughs> <laughs> What's your next one, buddy? Uh, yeah, I had two more. I love the Obi-Wan death, kind of resigned to his fate, knowing that if he'd have kept battling Darth Vader, that Luke wouldn't have left. So he kind of knew that, you know, he had to sacrifice himself for Luke to leave because he was too young or stubborn and would have stuck around and all that, all that yep. stuff. Um, and then the final point is no medal for Chewie. What the yeah. hell? Yeah. What's up with that? They rewrote um, a book about it. They rewrote a it, book. Yeah, they did a they did a, in the the Chewy comic book they put out like a year or two ago. He gets his medal. Oh, okay. they show that he gold. has it. And he, he Chewie goes on a solo adventure to some planet and meets this girl, and he teams up with her to like help take down the. It's like a throwaway storyline. Like it's very much you. I wouldn't suggest reading it. But they at the end of it, Chewie gives this girl his medal, and that's why he, he he's like he befriends this girl, and he's like here have the medal. <laughs> there, yeah, there's that. But yeah, in the film context, why didn't he get a medal? And we see it in the film. It's fucking stupid. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and that's pretty much it for me. What about what about you, Dylan? Can we, uh, one last thing. First mainstream incest ever. <laughs> yeah. Nope. <laughs> set nope. the th- nope. set the scene for Game what, of Thrones. What? That's what happened. Doesn't count. Doesn't count <sighs> if you don't know about it. <laughs> yeah. Don't. Don't say it. Don't say it. The incest Don't doesn't happen it. in this movie, does it? That was like no, super attractive to that. Until next one. Empire. He just says she's beautiful yeah. or something like that when he sees her. Like, oh, she's really beautiful. Well, she's so really pretty. I like her so much. And then Han comes in like, do you reckon a girl like me and her? Nah. Nah. She's mine. 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 Nah. Wouldn't go for a smuggler like you, Han. Nah, mate. Not mine. I call dibs. <laughs> like, like... That's the... <laughs> yeah, dibs, mate. <laughs> also, the writing for Luke in this movie was signs of things to come. Like, <laughs> some of the writing was atrocious, George Lucas. Everyone, like, everyone complains and says, like, Mark Hamill's terrible in this. I don't think no, Mark no, Hamill's no, great in this, and he's, Mark Hamill's definitely better in episode five and six. You could see However, the resemblance between Anakin the and Luke. Majority of the mo- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for the majority of the movie, I think he's fine. His worst line is his first one, where he's like, but I was going to go to Tazi Station and buy some power converters. <laughs> 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 that is the worst line of the movie. Shut up, ever. Luke. You're grounded. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's like a really weird scene to especially be introduced to your hero of the the thing. Um, I didn't have much to write down for A New Hope because it's like, there's not much new information added from EU stuff to grab my attention. And it's, you know, it's a movie we've watched a bunch of times. The, the most interesting thing is just always trying to just generally watch it straight after Rogue One. I just find it a, like a... I find I do really enjoy that package of a, watching those two movies back to back, and I've done it twice now, and I, I think it's it's really great. Obviously, not something I'm going to do every second week as much as I like Star Wars because it's like a four hour marathon. But I I just do think the movies work so well together, especially because as soon as I finish Rogue One, I just want to watch a New Hope. I can't watch Rogue One by itself without wanting to watch a New Hope straight after it because it just gets me straight at the end. It just gets me there. I'm like ah, oh, just. Fuck, I need to watch A New Hope. And when I finish A New Hope, I don't feel the rush to watch Empire because it doesn't have, like, that lead-on click because A New Hope basically finishes and everyone's happy and cheery and here's some medals and they're like, but it's not over. And it they, they doesn't have that, like, cliffhangery end that, of course, Empire has where to, to lead you on to want to watch the next movie. But, yeah, no, New Hope's great. Can't wait. There's all, there's all sorts of stuff. All right, let's cover quickly... <laughs> Um, <laughs> let's cover quickly some Star Wars news and grab everyone's thoughts on these things. So Star Wars live action, uh, trilogy of new movies was announced. Uh, Ryan Johnson is directing at least the first one and he's overseeing the general production of all of these movies, which to me, I presume means like setting up the world, the characters, the general overarching mm. themes and story of the trilogy, but he may or may not be directing all three of them. I'm going to presume he'll direct the first one, then probably pass off, maybe come back to do the third one or something like that. All right, so starting with you, Ash, what was your reaction to this news? More yeah, Star Wars good. is good? Brian Johnson's a great director. I like all his stuff, so 
What more can you ask for? And it's going to be interesting to see what he actually does. Like, it's it's not yeah, tied it's to the, the Skywalker saga, so. Yeah, yeah. That's the, I think that's the important thing to point out for people freaking out about this news. It's, it's uh, a, a new trilogy, brand new characters, new world. They just keep saying new, new, new stuff you've never seen in Star Wars before. So it's presumably not going to be Jedi's. And I, everyone keeps stream, screaming that it's going to be Old Republic. I don't think it's Old Republic. I think it's going to be set during the period between episodes six and seven. And it'll be like with random characters or something like that. And it'll probably have nothing to do with the Rebellion or the Empire or the Resistance or the New Order or whatever the hell you want to call it. Like it's just going to be uh, a bunch of cool characters and yep. just some story. I don't know. Um, Kieran. I can, I can see this becoming almost akin to the Marvel movies. I, I, for, for some reason get the, feeling, really, I get, for some reason, <laughs> I get the feeling that, uh, we're going to end up with like two Star Wars movies a year. Yeah. We're going to get to that point Probably. where we get multiple Star Wars movies in a year. Um, you know, they've, Not they've already got the monopoly on December. So, by accident, you know, they've, gonna, they haven't wanted to get it. It's just the reshoots. Oh, no. Yeah, they keep moving them. Yeah, they keep moving them, and they're like, December's pretty great. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I hope there's they do something new, but there is still some kind of link to what we know as Star Wars, because I don't want to, I don't want to feel like, you know, this is some other sci-fi movie with a Star Wars sticker slapped on it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, buddy, very worried actually for that kind of that reason Ooh. about um, you know what you the parallels to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and kind of the oversaturation and how how dearly I hold Star Wars in my heart. Um, it's, it could be yeah I don't want to get over fatigued by it. Like I'm ex- I'm ex- I'm definitely excited about the news because you know I, I love more Star Wars, but I just don't want them to get too out of hand. If you know what I mean, I don't want to misuse the properties, especially now that, um, well, I guess they've already exhausted the source material, but they've still got Luke, Leia, and Han in, in this kind of <clears throat> seven, eight, and nine. What they do outside of that, so yeah, kind of worried, and especially I think it's strange the announcement before the Last Jedi as well. They must be really confident in Ryan Johnson, like they've probably seen the movie or how, how it's been handled, so. I just thought that maybe that would be announced closer to the movie or after the movie, maybe. Whereas, yeah, kind of maybe. I, I think the announcement got forced because it was announced during a um, like a financial uh, meeting, like a stockholders meeting or whatever you want to call it, like that. So it's one of those things where they have the meetings, they know the information can go. They do it in the video game industry as well, of course, where uh, they'll have these meetings and they will stuff will just get announced because these 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 things are like public or they're not very like private. They get leaked easily, stuff like that. And instead of just trying to keep it hush hush, because knowing that it probably, the information would probably get out during a stockholder meeting. Yeah. They just announced it properly, which is probably the smarter way. Cause then they get to be in charge of the information that's put out there and they can be like, put out videos and be like, this is really exciting news. Instead of just like, random variety story like mm. leak apparently ryan johnson's doing a story and then everyone's like oh what's that, what's that <laughs> mean so yeah for, for me um sorry quickly for me for it to not go down that marvel route it would have to be a kind of a linear, linear story with all those characters in each movie not you know here's your thor movie with some little touchstones to you know what's going to happen here and here's your captain america movie with all these other things that you have to see in this movie kind of forcing you to watch all these individual character movies to get the the gist of yep. the, this you know ensemble movie so as long as it doesn't do that then and it doesn't follow that kind of business model then that might be fine because then it's at least it's a trilogy hey this is three movies in a row this is back to the future one to three this is you dark know, night something like that mm-hmm. you reckon they do something similar to what they've done with the books where a movie comes out and then they jump back based on the feedback they get from those um, and kind of fill in some points. Like, do you reckon we go back and we get um, like a a more maybe Finn-based movie or um, do we go back and why is the character's name slipping from my mind now? Ray. Um, (laughs) Poe. No, we're not going to get a prequel for Ray. Not Ray, um, Finn's friend. Poe. Poe, Poe Dameron. Are we going to go back and get yeah. a Poe Dameron movie? Like, 
it's um no because he has his own comic book series that's basically a prequel series yeah yeah so it, it'd be interesting to see how they use these extra movies um i've said i'm such a as far as I'm concerned, you could make a Star Wars movie that is a legit comedy. You could make a Star Wars movie that is a legit horror movie. You can make a Star Wars... Like, as far as I'm concerned, the Star Wars universe is so... It is... The reason I love it so much is because the universe of Star Wars is the greatest cinematic whatever universe that feels lived in whole. And it feels... To, to me, if done correctly, you could do every single genre possible to make in the Star Wars universe, if written and directed correctly. So when they announce they're doing three more movies, I'm automatically like, do something crazy. Don't make it a war movie. Don't make it like a boring, another random character like Luke or Rey is found on the planet and they go on a hero mission, even if it has nothing to do with, like, the like if it's a big thing. But do something crazy. Make, like, a horror movie. A make three a movie, make, like Korg a s- documentary serious drama series. Or something. <laughs> yeah. Mockumentary. Yep. Fucking give it to me. Yeah. What we do in the galaxy. Lock it in. (laughs) Lock it in. But I think because Ryan Johnson's in charge of this from the get-go and he's going to be overseeing it and at least directing the first one, when when I'm thinking about Brick... Brick, yes. It's Brick, right? Yes. When I'm thinking about Brick uh, specifically, he's... That movie to me is like his... That's that's like Ryan Johnson and it's a very character piece and it's just got a bunch of characters and a mystery... And it's just a bit, it's, it's a very weird movie when you think about it and you watch it, it just has this weird off feeling thing. So I can imagine Ryan crafting a weird, smaller scale, very character focused Star With Wars Joseph movie. Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Like that. Oh man, if he puts <laughs> Joseph Gordon-Levitt into Star Wars, I'm fucking sold. <laughs> that is yeah. like my life right now. Be- um, so no, I'm excited. I can't wait to find out more. And I, I, I also think whenever people are like, oh, they're going to oversaturate it and like you, you like too many movies are going to ruin it. I think so, because because of the fact that I read like so many of the comics and the books and all that sort of stuff, the idea of oversaturation doesn't even come to me because I'm constantly taking in Star Wars, I guess, mm. compared to people who don't read and st- the books and the comics or anything like that. It's like that could scare you. But to me, it's like I'm already fucking reading something like every week or two. That's star Wars, an extra movie a year. Doesn't that an extra two hour movie year to me is like a drop in the water. Barely anything. Not enough. Yeah. Not like enough. in the scheme of things, it's like, so when people are like, Oh, they're trying to tell too many stories. I'll run out of ideas and stuff like that. I'm like, they're, they're, they're putting out things weekly of, of star Wars and they're coming up with stuff and they're, they're, they're already the, the stuff they've got in that's airing in rebels. Now they wrote like three years ago. They're so far ahead on the scale of what they're planning that they, I just, I, I think they've been very smart and I completely trust Lucasfilm. Like I love Kathleen Kennedy. She's like really smart. And every time I watch interviews with her, she seems so passionate and she's great. And the four or five people that are involved in the Lucasfilm story group that oversee everything that star Wars does, they're all fantastic. They're all very passionate. Um, whenever you watch interviews with any of them, they're just all great. And just because of all those people that I know were involved in the, the behind the scenes of what's happening at Lucasfilm, I just have complete faith because they haven't done anything wrong to me yet. So I'm not going to, and until they've, until they put out a movie, I really hate, or they do something bad. I've got no reason to, to be angry. Like if they put out a crappy book every now and then it's not the end of the world. If they put out a, a, an average star Wars movie, it's not the end of the world to me. Mm. Like I don't need every Star Wars movie to be a nine or a ten. So, all right. And the last piece of news uh, would be: I'm just going to say, what would you like it to be, and what do you think it'll be? Which is they announced that in 2019 we're getting a live action Star Wars TV series, which is something people have wanted basically forever. We got light. We got IGN did like a fake trailer yeah. once for like an old Republic series. I think IGN did that, and people have been on about like there was a. Talking, there was that one George Lucas was developing basically before uh, Lucasfilm got brought out from him under him, which was like the Star Wars Underworld series, and the, he, he apparently had hundreds of scripts for that. Ash, what would you like a live action Star Wars series to be, and what do you? I'd think love it for it to be Knights of the Old Republic, just a straight adaptation. That'd be awesome, mm-hmm. or like set in that world. That would be the dream. But uh, yep. maybe something like what Viscera was working on, like a ragtag of scoundrels just running around the galaxy. Just shit doing just, just doing random jobs stuff week to week, like different job weeks to each, like a yeah. firefly sort of yeah. rip off. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That, yeah. that does seem that's it's very realistic. viable. That's yeah, so 
Yeah. Uh, Kieran? I desperately want something about not the Old Republic because if they did Knights of the Old Republic, I'd be a bit disappointed because there's some twists in that that kind of make it good. But um, I would I would love it to be a movie about the Jedi like just before Phantom Menace, like maybe even more centered around Qui-Gon Jinn um, or that kind of Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan's relationship maybe or something like that. That would be really interesting. Um, but what I think it'll be, it'll be about similar to Ashes, but I think it'll be like about a small group of like rebels. Um, like a, almost like Rogue One kind of style of movie without everybody dying. Yep. Uh, buddy? Yeah, I kind of like <clears throat> Ash's idea. Um, I'd like it kind of be the format similar to what Star Trek kind of next gen was, was, you know, kind of discovering planets, different planets kind of, not each week, but, you know, they're all about kind of discovery and um, seeing different races and planets and things like that. I'd like it to be set nowhere near anything that we've seen before. So maybe just in the in the future, un, un, undefi- un, unspecified kind of time period after, you know, seven, eight or nine or whatever. And maybe it can be about, you know, the resurgence of the Jedis or something like that. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of, I don't really have a, a set idea, but I'm open to anything really. Um, my dream one would be a school show where it's je- it's like during the prequel era, Jedi, it's just, you follow some Jedi pupils and it's just set in school. But aren't they all like six or seven like, je- when they're in school? Yeah, but you follow from like, the, introduce like Jedis we haven't seen or something like that. And just Jedi babies. Them. I just want to see day-to-day life. <laughs> no, I just want to see day-to-day so life for like... You want Naruto, but Jedi. Basically, basically, I guess, yeah, that's what I want. I'd be down for um, because a lot of the a lot of the bigger ideas where it's like you're saying like Qui Gon prequel and all this sort of stuff, I'm like I can't see that happening in a TV series of being viable. So when you th- when you think TV series, the reason like Ash's idea is probably the one that's going to happen. That's what you said is what I think is going to happen because you as soon as someone says that or you think it in your head, you s- you just see it easy. It's like it's a serial TV show week to week. They can just introduce random. It's like we're gonna take this cargo from A to B, that's a 42-minute episode. Uh, you just introduce some random bad guy they pop into every three episodes, and that's that's a TV show. That's, like, what most TV shows are, and most TV shows are crappy when you boil them down, but that's <laughs> that's how it is. Um, so, yeah, that's it. But, yeah, my dream one would be to get more prequel-era stuff because I just love seeing Coruscant during the, the prequel-era time, and if they did a show like that where it followed around... Uh, Jedi's teaching who went actually off during the Clone War or something like that. You could just see a whole bunch of Coruscant, have them deal with random baddies that beat up, I don't know, stuff like that. But I just I just basically want more Coruscant. I could definitely get um, behind Degrassi Jedi High. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about, what about a Palpatine Jedi slash House of Cards show? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, without the touching. No. <laughs> yeah, too tsunami. With tsunami. Christopher Plummer. Um, <laughs> please, Lord. Um, His surname I is Spacey. Go- was- <laughs> no, please stop. <laughs> Hate you, all. Stop. Um, I was going. To- I was going to give my general impressions of Battlefront, but we'll probably just wrap it up instead of doing that. Why don't you just give us your quick like impression? Come back next here. week if you want to hear that. No, Glad it. So come no. back next come week. Come back next play week. More of. I'll have played more of Battlefront. Um, so will but I. a BT dubs on that, by the way, in case you didn't read the news, there is DLC coming out on the 13th, uh, single player DLC on the 13th. That is Last mm. Jedi tie in where you're going to play as Iden Versio during like the rise of the First Order. And that's coming out on the day Star Wars comes out. So I, that's, that's cool. It's, I'm glad we're getting single player DLC for this game as well as multiplayer DLC and stuff like that. And that's great. But join us next week where I'll talk more about Battlefront. You can go to Explosion Network's YouTube channel. I've already got a Let's Play up right now of the first uh, prologue, first chapter, whatever you want to call Maybe it. Maybe more by now. Battlefront. Maybe more by now. That is true. I don't know. How much work can all I the put work. in? I can put in all the work. Putting, putting in, in all the work. work. <laughs> that sounds like great podcast idea. <laughs> older on work. Putting in older on <laughs> work. Oh, fucking God. <laughs> Um, thank you for joining the us. The longest for our, piece of uh, content. Probably this will probably be the the longest episode of Explosion Network content ever, and this will be the longest episode of 
um, <laughs> older on explosion as far as I'm concerned. But I've had a great time. I like talking about Star Wars. I don't know if that's evident by the, <laughs> at this point. But I'm, I'm glad you have all been here to join me along this ride. You can find Ashley, me can on find Twitter you? at Ashley Hobley, A-S-H-L-E-Y, H-O-B-L-E-Y. It's a thing. <laughs> Thank you. Kieran, where can people find you? You can uh, find me playing Wizard's Chest on the Millennium Falcon or over at Twitter at your boy Ringo. It's a, at, at Explosion at explosion pod twitch or oh well if you want to check if you want to watch me on twitch like twitch.tv slash explosion okay, okay, you, you said on twitch and then... oh, did i say on twitch i meant twitter so okay, so either you. at your boy ringo on twitter or like, twitch.tv slash explosion network you're gonna edit oh, this so it twitch. sounds thank you like he knows um, what he's talking about right um, no no okay. no i'm not <laughs> hell no i'm not okay hell capable. fucking no i'm fine. not <laughs> that's fine capable <laughs> And special guest star Buddy Watson, thank you for joining us for this very long episode. I hope you've had a great time talking about Star Wars. Uh, where can people find you? Yeah, it's been awesome, man. Uh, you can find me over at Twitter at Buddy Watson12. Uh, and you can also uh, go find my podcast, Review Culture. It's on iTunes, the soon to be defunct SoundCloud, and all good podcast services. So uh, we've been uh, ha- on a break for a month, uh, got married, all that yeah. jazz, but coming back with the Justice League app next week. So cool. Very good. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Viva Ladil, V-I-V-A-L-A-D-I-L. You can follow the show on Twitter at Explosion Pod. And don't forget to like the show, subscribe, share with your friends, do all the fancy, fancy things. Let's be honest, we're about two hours in and I can't be fucked doing this whole slob of crap at the end of the show. But I hope you enjoyed it and be sure to come back for next week. We'll be talking about Empire Strikes Back and Battlefront 2 and other things. May the force be with you. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Cruzy Mate here with all you need to know about November here at the Explosion Network. Firstly, we would like to extend a big thank you to everyone who donated to our Extra Life campaign to help the big, beautiful kids. You can check out all our challenge videos going up on YouTube over the month of November. While you're over there, check out all our PAX coverage, the Explosion Network's first convention. We have a bunch of videos going up on all the games we played over at bit.ly slash Explosion Network. Also, our Best of 2017 awards start in late November, so get pumped for that with more information to come soon. And don't forget, Older on Explosion continues every Friday at 12pm if you want your weekly dose of Star Wars hype leading up to The Last Jedi. And you know, all our weekly shows will continue. Pleasure on Mondays, Platt on Tuesdays, and Grandstand Gurus goes live on Thursdays, all at 12pm. And finally, we will be returning to full form over on twitch.tv slash Explosion Network with all our weekly streams. So keep your targets locked on explosionnetwork.com for all of the explosive content. Plat, plat. Guys, guys. What? Guys, guys. When when Vader and, and Luke Skywalker are both in the Cloud City, they really are Skywalkers. I that is so corny. I don't even know if I can be fuck cutting that out and sticking it at the end of the show. Wouldn't, I'm going to be honest. I don't even know. Like that might be beyond the point what? of return. How? Anytime they're walking that's on a ship content. that's like in orb, like in orbit, aren't they technically? Yeah, technically, Ash is right. No, yeah. but then they're orbit walkers. What if they're under so. the in the atmosphere <laughs> and they're walking around the ship? Then they're atmosphere walkers. They're not in the sky. So if they're on Endor, would they be moonwalkers? Hey! Yes! Yeah! I hate that you've yeah. sunk to the <laughs> fucking level, buddy. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs>